Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the stream. God Logic Apologetics. We are in for another one. Got a big hitter with us yet again, the one and only Sam Shimon, the hater of the year. What's going on, man? Why you hate, man? Participate. Well, like Stop hate. Oh, listen, man. Don't hey, hate. Participate, hate. hater. Drop the hater aid. Hey, listen, man. I'm just a player. Play. I don't hate. I don't do no, no man. hate, man. You know Tell it's me. your world. We're all just squirrels. Squirrel. <laughs> Let's do it here. What's happening, man? But I, I'm happy to see everybody in the chat. Some familiar names. I love all of you guys. Thank you for coming in. By the grace of the Lord, this is going to be a beautiful session. Um, and 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 Sam is going to uh, give us some some nuggets, man. Some knowledge that we can use to help. Uh, press for the kingdom and destroy all falsehood. So, Amen. Uh, Amen. man, my brother is here. I'm so excited. Yeah, yes. By, by the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, only by his grace, it will be a tremendous session. Apart from his grace, honestly, it's going to be chaos. So we trust in his grace and mercy, the grace and mercy of the Father, the Son, the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit. That's why we always have to begin in prayer. So, man, whoever wants to pray for the Holy Spirit to fill us, guide us, lead us, even when we discuss another religion, we have to be accurate because you guys know this. I'm preaching to the choir. Our God is a God of truth, and he commands us to affirm the truth, love the truth, live the truth, and never lie to promote his truth. That's a contradiction. That's Islam. That's not the true faith. So whoever wants to pray, we need him. We need him not just for the session. We need him, we need him to live. Yes. He is our life. Yes. All right. I'll, I'll lead us in prayer. Uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we come to you, triune God, true God, King of kings, Lord of lords. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the life that you've given us, for renewing and reviving our spirits. Lord God, we ask that your spirit sets in this room, that you settle in our hearts, our minds, settle in our ears, that we are not distracted by the enemy that tries to come in, no trolls. Lord, I ask that you bless the connection. I ask that you bless every listener, every viewer here, that the knowledge that is given to us is instilled in us, that it becomes second nature, Lord God, so that we can use it to glorify you, glorify your name, and knock down any thought, any falsehood that tries to rise oh, God, itself God. above you. Lord your God, you're powerful. You are almighty. It is you that we worship. It is you that we glorify. And move us out of the way. We know that it's not us, but it's you, Lord. You don't need any of us. And we thank you for using us as vessels yes, to bring God. the truth and be your witnesses. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. <clears throat> Amen. 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 Father, since we're in Jesus' mighty name, watch this. What am I going to say? We can Lord Jesus Christ. Just curiously, anything happen Sunday before we begin? I mean, because Sunday's the day usually you go to the park. Nothing happened? Uh, so it was Mother's Day, so I didn't get to oh, go. Oh, that's right. I was, I forgot I was, with, that. I was with my mama. But uh, uh, Anthony, the one who sets up the tent, he still went out there and uh, Shake did show up. Hmm. He did show up and uh, Anthony confronted him about finishing the translation of chapter 3, verse 146 in the Warsh Quran. He hmm. wrote down the one in the Hafs Quran, but didn't finish the one in the <laughs> Warsh Quran. Uh, that, was, that was a couple months ago. Uh, and he said he will finish it and the Shake refused him. He said, oh, you're just trying to, you know, uh, get, you're just doing this for your content. I know guys like you and just, you know, just try to avoid him the whole time. And yeah. so that's all we got. It's, it's on it's on Bible or Quran, the YouTube channel, Bible or Quran. He has the little clip where Sheikh is refusing to uphold yeah. his promise on there. <laughs> yeah. And Anthony usually joins. All right. Uh, usually. Right. Yeah. Usually um, oh, he should be. He should be on his way over here. I'm, I'm oh, texting by the him. grace. Oh. Grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to continue where we left off. I don't know if we're going to need another part or this will sum it up, but I highly encourage everyone again. With these sessions I do, because again, before there was a clubhouse or a Discord or a Pal Talk, no, Pal Talk's been around for a while. I can't even say that. But before there was a YouTube and a Facebook Live, everything on the internet was written. In other words, when we engage people, we'd have to engage them through written responses. So you'd have a website. I have a website. You'd respond to an article of mine. I'd respond to an article of yours. This is why glory to the triune God, glory to the Father, the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit. If you go to answeringislam.info, 
And the reason why I use that URL, answeringislam.info, is because the original URL, answering-islam.org, is banned in many Muslim countries. Oh, wow. That makes sense. So if you're in Pakistan or UAE, you can't get the answering-islam.org. But <clears throat> some people contact me and said that the other URLs, answeringislam.net, worked. But then some countries caught on and banned the answeringislam.net. So now I go with answeringislam.info. So a lot of people are not able to access these sites. But if you use the answeringislam.info, I believe that in Muslim countries it still works. This was started, just to give you a little history so I don't belabor the point. There was a precious brother in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's still walking with the Lord Jesus. He loves the Lord Jesus Christ. His name was Jochen Katz. He came to America. He's from Germany. He came to America to get his PhD in math. So he is a math whiz. He's a genius. And he's a very logical, rational, brilliant mind. He tried to get his PhD in math, but what he noticed was that there were Muslims who would have what they call Islamic Awareness Week. If you guys are in college campuses, if you go to even universities, you have what's known as the Muslim Student Association, MSA. And from what I remember, it has ties with the Muslim Brotherhood. But with that said, MSA, very heavily actively involved on campuses, 80s and 90s. They bring in Muslim scholars, converts, and debaters. And they'd ha they would have Islamic Awareness Week. Now, I don't know if that stopped. You guys would know if you're in college. It, you, there should be, unless it's now defunct, MSA and Islamic Awareness Week. Any one of you guys in college? I am. Yeah. So do you have MSA on your college? Not that I am aware of. Well, that's amazing. So they're gone, huh? I wow. guess. Yeah, I haven't heard of them, and I'm on campus uh, every other day. Yeah. yeah, so they were huge in the 80s and 90s. They would bring in the heavy hitters and have them debate Christians. Now, Jochen Katz, during his uh, stay here, he went to one of these Islamic Awareness Weeks. And during the week, they have topics on Jesus being a Muslim and the Bible corrupt. So he was very passionate. And at that time, the internet was catching on, but everything was like social groups. They didn't have websites. So he went trying to find a Christian social group that responded to Muslims. Instead, he found a lot more Muslim social groups attacking Christianity. So God put a fire in his heart to start, to start answering Islam, 1998. God put in his heart, you don't wait for someone, you do it. And that should be, a motivation and encouragement for some of you. Some of you may be looking for a resource, and God may be saying, if you don't find it, you start it. You do it. That's what he did. During this time, I was writing articles for myself so I could carry the articles with me in case I got into a debate and needed to have the facts, right? Because we didn't have internet. We didn't have iPhones. So you either have to carry the books or you'd have articles. And so a friend told me, hey, you know, answering Islam is, a, is um, inviting you know, writers to contribute. 1999, send them articles, and that's where our relationship began. Glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, and this is no exaggeration. Answering Islam became the biggest website, the most <clears throat> influential website destroying Islam. Muslims hated us. So a lot of the materials that I'm giving you are materials that are found on that site and now on my blog that are written. So all these facts, all these hadiths, all this information that you need, instead of going and looking for them in the Muslim sources or buying books, they're there. It's in the articles, rebuttals, because we had to do the work. So God put in our hearts to do the work for the next generation, making it so much easier, save you so much money, but you got to access the materials. So the stuff I'm going to be covering are there. They're on answeringislam.info. They're on my blog because I continue to write because I want to provide these citations in a blog post so that you guys don't have to hunt down the books and it'll be there. And one thing we, one of our reputations, and a Muslim admit this, and I'll probably find the clip right now. Hamza Yusuf was giving a talk on Islamophobia. It's on YouTube. He mentioned websites and he mentioned our website. And you know what he said? He was saying, this is an Islamophobic website. But you know what he admit? Guys, you know what he admit? And that and you can find it right now. Someone may, as I'm talking, maybe you can go and find it and find the exact clip. We'll play it because I can't do two things at one time. 
he admit, he goes, the website is very accurate in its citation. He admitted it. He said, we quote accurately. And that's one thing we glorify the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. As much as they tried, they could never discredit us and say, you lied, you made something up. Because we knew if we're going to serve the Lord, we had to be as accurate, as precise as possible. Let's Muslims find a mistake and make it worse than it is to discredit us. So they couldn't discredit the content. So now they try to attack our character and our personal lives. So this is to assure you, these are battle-tested arguments, arguments we've used in the field that God has perfected and they're irrefutable. I'm not exaggerating. They are irrefutable. That's incredible. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that, that history about that is very interesting, man. And yeah. it's, it's helped me in my walk so much, Sam, seriously. Yeah. Like, and, all the, and by the way, all the heavy hitters started answering Islam. Uh, David Wood started yeah. there. He's got articles there. Wow. You know, and others that I can't mention their names because I don't think they've come out and said that they used to write under certain pen names or pseudonyms. Mm -hmm. So I can't. But some influential people, even some of Jay Smith's material are there, even Anthony Rogers and so on. So answering Islam was the platform. Even Samuel Green, who's known for doing apologetics with Muslims, he's got a section with his articles there. If you wanted to make an impact destroying Islam, you went to answering Islam. Right. I'm not kidding. Go to individual authors, you'll see. And Samuel Green, Anthony Rogers, David Wood, you know. So, but Lord, in my heart, I became the chief writer. That doesn't mean I was the most qualified. I'm not trying to be humble. I'm just saying, I just because I write a lot doesn't mean I'm the most qualified, right? I just meant that God put in my heart, that's what you're going to do. You're going to write. And I did not know when I started writing, honestly, that the material I was producing would have this lasting effect because now, and I like one day I just laughed. It just dawned on me, honestly, because I, you don't think about it. I was sitting there and I laughed to myself like, man, I got an article almost on every topic. Right. <laughs> and it just hit me like, wow, what an amazing Lord we have that he take a nobody and move him to do work, which I didn't understand the impact of. And I pray I stay humble about it. But it's funny. It's like, yeah, I got an article on that. <laughs> right? It's yeah, like yeah. I even got an article on, you know, how to wash your clothes. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I don't know. That's really funny, though, because you literally do have whenever I go in and, and search up a question or something like that, it's <laughs> it's an answer against my article that comes up fully detailed, fully detailed, fully explained yep. <laughs> as the Quran and, tries to claim. And I mentioned that because I have articles for this topic that I'm going to be sending to our brother on Facebook because I'm on the phone and for me to get off, it's going to be too hard. So I'm on my Mac and on my phone. I'll be sending you the article. So let's continue where we left off. What I want to do is I want to talk now about praying to Muhammad. Yep, you heard me right. Praying to Muhammad. We <laughs> touched on that in the previous sessions when we talked about Muhammad being the mediator, the intercessor, and another ilah, a God alongside of Allah. <clears throat> that was in part two. And how Muslims said that you can go to his grave and speak to him in the grave in order to be able to act upon those commands of the Quran that require Muhammad's presence. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, go to part two. It's there. We went in depth. I just want to add to that by showing that you have sound Sunni narrations. Now, when you're dealing with an Uthman who's a Salafi, he'll sell you for a fee. <laughs> just kidding. I like that. Salafi. Uh, Salafi. <laughs> wow. Stop. If you said that joke, you'd be laughing, hater. No nah, man. man, what a hater, bro! Darn you, man! <laughs> I would look, man. I just know that you could do better. I just know you could do better, That's friend. Like... Salafi, you know Salafi, like Pharisee. I heard they're fair. I did it. I no, no, it's like joke. Pharisee, dude. It's like Pharisee. They're fair, you see. You get it? Or Sadducee? They're sad, you see, because they didn't believe in resurrection. Come on, man. I like Sadducee. I like yeah. that one. That's yeah. good. By the way, I was going to ask you: Is your face hurting you, brother? Honestly. No, I mean it's beautiful, man. Because it's killing me. All right, but anyway. Wow, the haterism is in the air. Y'all hear Haterade. this, y'all. It's live. Drinking it's live. haterade, and it's recorded too. But um, now, when you're dealing with the Salafis, <clears throat> they do not accept this, even though it's sound. You're going to see that the <clears throat> Hadiths are classified as Sahih, they're sound. They still don't accept them because they are fully aware that according to Muhammad, <clears throat> 
dua, the word dua, like dua, dua, no, no, but the word dua means invoke, supplicate. Dua is the Arabic term to invoke Allah, supplicate Allah. Now, there is a general usage where I can ask you. Obviously, I'm asking you. That would be considered invoking you, supplicating, but it's not in the sense of supplicating, invoking in a religious context where I'm invoking Allah, supplicating Allah for my needs. That's called dua. Now, I'm going to read to you hadith where Muhammad said, at dua is worship. At dua huwa at ibadah. He says, at dua is worship. Your worship is your invocation. Your invocation is your worship. And yet, there are sound narrations, sahih, sound narrations where people are praying to Muhammad and Allah in the same prayer. Okay? Right. Now, the Salafis try to weaken these narrations, and they won't accept them. They'll say, because they understand to pray to Muhammad, especially in the same context where you're praying to Allah, this is shirk, the sin of associating a creature with Allah, because invocation is worship, ibadah. And therefore, these hadiths cannot be accepted, though they're sound. Now, most Sunni Muslims are not Salafi, and I want people to understand this. Most Sunni Muslims would say they're Ashari, Maturidi, and they do not believe Allah's body parts. They say these are all metaphors, and they do believe in what's called, guys, I'm using technical terms not to sound intelligent, but these are the terms that you're going to encounter when you're studying. It's called tawassul, tawassul, wasiyah, seeking a means with Allah, tawassul. So that they say in the Quran and the sound narrations, Allah permits seeking a means to approach him. That's what tawassul means. One of those means is approaching Allah through Muhammad or approaching Allah through a saint or approaching Allah through angels. Not only do the Asharis and the Maturis accept it, the Shia accept it, especially with their imams and their infallible, you know, ayat, ayat, you know, Ayatollahs, whatever you call them, Ayatollah. By the way, the word Ayatollah, by the way, if you guys don't know what Ayatollah means, it means Ayat Allah, a miracle of Allah. So when you hear about the Ayatollah Khomeini, the way you're pronouncing English, because, you know, we English people, we butcher every language, it's Ayat Allah, meaning sign miracle of Allah. And that's one of the names of Jesus in the Quran. He is Ayat Allah. He is Ayat Allah. So these... These clerics, these rulers of, of Iran, the Shia, when they call Khomeini Ayat Allah because they're saying he's a miracle because they believe in their clerics, imams, they're infallible. Right? right. So Shia and Ashari and Maturidi, right, all believe in this teaching called Tawassul, meaning seeking a means with Allah. I mean, you can invoke saints, you can invoke Muhammad, you can invoke his companions, or what they would call the awliya, the friends of Allah, asking them to pray for you and to help you with Allah's permission. The Salafi Muslims, that's Uthman, that's Sheikh Asim al-Hakim, one of my favorites, I really like listening to the guy, say, no, this is shirk, you can't do it. Right? But the majority of Muslims say, no, they're wrong. So we're going to talk about that. So let's begin. Let's talk about... Hello. Yes, someone, okay, I thought I said uh, hello, someone said hello. Okay, let me get you the articles. There are two of them, uh, and this is on my blog. Five-step outline proving Muhammad is worshipped as a god. That's article number one, so let me get it for you, sir. I'm going to send you both articles right. on Facebook. So article number one, hold on, let me get you, let me find you, bro. All right, it's uh, righty then, man, I got, I got, believe it or not, more than one Facebook account, because when one gets blocked, I use the other. One time they blocked both of both of them for thirty days. Suck being me at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, wow. Yeah, because in Facebook they'll block you or ban you for let's say a period of time, thirty days. I got sick of it, so I go, man, I'm going to start my Ben Malik because Ben Malik means son of the king, and we who believe in Jesus Christ are all sons and daughters of the king, right? So when a Sam Shimon account gets banned, blocked for thirty days, I go to that one. But one time, my luck, both got blocked for thirty days. You know, sucks being me, but hey, man, it's your world. Now, here you go. Here's the other one. Here's the other one. So we're going to be working in all the hadiths, all the narrations, everything you need is there. And I do give people permission. Why do you think I write these? For you, 
So you have my authorization. You don't even need to ask me. Take the materials. Take my sessions. Upload them. Translate them. But one thing I ask, actually more than one thing, please make sure you ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand what you hear and see and read. Because I've caught people misrepresenting a point I made, right? Because they don't listen that well. You need to. And then share it freely. Now, if you have a ministry and people, may they contribute. But you don't make it a condition that, hey, you can only use this stuff if you pay me. No, no, no. If I'm giving it to you freely because the Lord has given us freely, you better pass it on freely. Now, if someone wants to then reward you for your work, amen. The labor is worthy of his wages. So keep that in mind. So that said, let's go. Let's read. Let me go to the articles, two of them that I just sent them. Five stop outline proving Muhammad is worshipped as a god. The other article, and you're gonna get you're gonna like this one. Muhammad Hijab proves Muslims are Mohammedans who worship a false prophet. Takbir. Now that's what I like. <laughs> but both articles will cover the same material, basically. In his debate with David Wood, and I, I quote it in that article: Muhammad Hijab proves Muslims are Mohammedans who worship a false prophet. In the debate, he says, and the word actually, salah, means dua. Salah is the Arabic word for prayer. Dua is the word to invoke, supplicate, right, to ask. That's in their debate. So now he said, prayer is dua. Prayer is invocation. Prayer means to invoke. Keep that in mind. What is prayer, salah? To invoke, to supplicate. Keep that in mind. That's Muhammad Ajah's own definition. Mm -hmm. And now let's quote narrations that attributed to Muhammad that are sound, Sahih, where Muhammad is reported to have said, Dua invoking is worship. Here we go. If you go to either one, either one post, I give you a slew of narrations. I'm now looking at five step outline proving Muhammad is worshipped as God. Step number one, Muhammad said, so I'll give you five steps. Muhammad said, Dua huwa al ibadah. Dua invocation is the worship. It didn't say worship, uh, ibadah, el ibadah, the worship. It is worship. He he, the Arabic has the definite article el ibadah, the worship, ibadah to serve, right? And this was reported by Ahmad Abu Dawood at Tirmidhi Ibn Majah, Al Hakim, and others collected this narration, which Al Hakim Al Zahabi. The Habi and Al Albani rated as Sahih, sound, reliable, authentic. Now, when I go to the other post, Muhammad Ajab, I'm going to quote some narrations. This comes from Aisha Buley's translation, Al Adab Al Mufrad Al Bukhari. Now, a lot of people don't know Bukhari didn't just write Sal Bukhari, which is nine volumes in English. He wrote other works, most famous of which is Sal Bukhari, but he also wrote Al Adab Al Mufrad and others, right? So here. Quoting the English translation Aisha Buley, which is online. This comes from the section 296, The Excellence of Supplication. Hadith number 712 to 714. 712, 713, 714. Watch. Abu Huraira reported that the Prophet said, Nothing is dearer to Allah than supplication. Number 713. Abu Huraira reported that the Prophet said, The noblest act of worship is supplication. Did you catch it? What is the noblest act of worship? It's to supplicate. So he called it worship. Now, hadith number 714. And Numan ibn Bashir, or Bashir, it's Bashir, but some will say Bashir. You know, Bashir. <laughs> no, shut your mouth. Anyway, that's chapter 4, verse 34. Uh, reported that the prophet said, supplication is worship. And then he quotes a Quranic verse, chapter 40, verse 60. Then he recited, call on me and I will answer you. Right now, here this comes from <clears throat> this is a long one, by the way. This comes from the English translation of Jami at Tirmidhi, which is online, sunnah.com. And I give the link to it. Jami at Tirmidhi. Here I was quoting from the hard copy, English translation, volume six. Right? It's <clears throat> book 45, the book of supplication. The hadith number is 3372. And the reason why I quoted the book is because the book has. Comments by the translators not found on the online version. So here I want, I'm going to read the comment, what they say. But first let me read that deep. And Numan bin Bashir narrated that the prophet said, Thus supplication is worship. Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah. 
Then he recited, and your Lord said, Call upon me, and I'll respond to you. Verily, those who scorn my worship, they will surely enter hell humiliated. What's the grading? Sahih. Ah, it's sound, right? Yeah. Abu Isa said, This hadith is Hassan Sahih. It's good and it's sound. Mansur and Al Amash, Amash, narrated from Dar, and we do not know it except from the narration of Dar. He is Dar. Abdullah al Hamdani, trustworthy, thiqa. I even believe the Arabic is thiqa, the father of Umar bin Dhar. Now, the comment here's the comment supplication is worship in itself. This is the commentator, right? The translator commentary of the, of the English translation. Supplication is worship in itself. And for proof, the Prophet recited the verse of Surah Ghafir. Ghafir is chapter 40 of the Quran. Call upon me, I will respond to you. Verily, those who scorn my worship, call upon me is the word for dua. Now notice in the verse, dua is called worship. Call upon me, make dua to me, I will respond to you. Verily, those who scorn my worship, right, ibadah, they will surely enter hell humiliated. This verse shows that not begging his favors is a sign of scorn. <clears throat> As supplication is the essence of worship, and without its essence, the supplication is nothing but lifeless utterances. So there you go, right? Okay. Now, how does this prove that Muslims worship Muhammad? Well, because they pray to Muhammad. When and where? Well, the most obvious one <clears throat> is that five times a day when the Muslims perform their salah, which is their worship, by the way, five daily prayers, they do what is called tashahud, tashahud, testification. In that part of their prayer, this is mandatory, by the way. Mandatory is to recite Surah Al-Fatiha, or your prayer is incomplete, and to perform tashahud. Otherwise, your prayer is incomplete. What do they say in tashahud in their five daily prayers, which is them conversing to Allah? Here goes. Sahih Muslim, book four, number 0798. Sahih Muslim, right? Again, this is Sahih Muslim. <clears throat> book four, number 0798, 798. Ibn Abbas reported, reported, the messenger of Allah used to teach us tashahud just as he used to teach us a surah of the Quran. And he would say, and hear the words that they utter in the prayer. All services rendered by words, acts of worship, and all good things are due to Allah. Peace be upon you, O Prophet. And Allah's mercy and blessings. As-salamu alayka, ahiyo nabi. And Allah's mercy and blessings. Peace be upon us and upon Allah's upright servants. I testify that there is, no, there is no God but Allah, and I testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And the nation of Ibn Rub, the words are, as he would teach us the Quran. Did you guys catch it? They're speaking to Muhammad. They're praying to Muhammad directly. Yep. They're saying, As-salamu alayka. Peace be upon you. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Yep. In their five daily prayers, they're talking to Muhammad no matter where they're at on the, on the planet. How? I literally brought this up to Muslims a few weeks ago, and they tried to say, "Well, we're not asking Muhammad to do anything." Or no, you. I'll get to that. Silly. No, I'll get to that. They do ask him. I'll get to that. But it doesn't matter. It's you're talking to him in a prayer that you're supposed to be talking to Allah. Exactly. That's the point. Now, when they pray for Muslims, notice they don't speak to any Muslim. They go, "Peace be upon us and the upright servants." So that's a difference, right? Yeah. I'm not saying peace be on Avery. Well, I can say that if I'm not talking to you. Peace be on you, O Avery, and I'm in Hawaii. Right. You see the difference? Yep. Well, when Muhammad, yeah. they speak to him directly, but when they're praying for the Muslims and the righteous, they say, peace be upon us and the upright servants. So again, they're speaking to Allah. Peace be upon us. O Allah, grant us peace and grant your peace upon upright servants. But here they're saying to Muhammad, Allah's peace be on you, Muhammad. Now, they'll say, well, okay, well, you're not asking him. That's fine if I'm not asking him. Now, let me show you where you do ask him, okay? Let me show you where you do ask him. Now, let me get to the section where they, you do ask him. Hold on one second. Oh, but we don't ask him, brother. Stuck for Allah, get stuck for Allah. All right, here you go. These two are, um, are also sahih. <clears throat> here it is. It's in both posts, by the way. Here I'm going to be quoting... The English translation of Jami Tirmidhi, it's going to be volume 6, page 
page 283. But online, I give you the link online. Now, we can't display it, obviously, in the room. But it's there. It's number 3578. Now, guys, pay attention. 3578, it's Sahih. And it's going to get bad. Oh, boy, it's going to get bad. <whistles> what a mess. All right. Uthman ibn Hunayf. Uthman ibn Hunayf narrated that a blind man came to the Prophet said to him, supplicate to Allah to heal me. Pray to Allah to heal me. Make dua. He said, if you wish, I will supplicate for you. And if you wish, you can be patient for that is better for you. He said, then supplicate to him. He said, so he ordained him. So now Muhammad is telling him what to do. He told him to perform wudu, ritual ablution, because he's about to pray, and make his wudu complete. And to supplicate with this supplication. Now Muhammad is telling him what to say. Go to your home and do this. Say, Oh Allah, Allahumma, I ask you and turn towards you by your prophet Muhammad. When I thought there are no mediators in Islam. The prophet of mercy. Indeed, I have turned to my Lord by means of you. Now he's talking to Muhammad. But Muhammad is not there. Because he told him, go do it, right? Go perform wudu and do it in your home, right? By means of you concerning the seed of mine, so that it can be resolved. So Allah, so accept his intercession for me. So not only is he saying, Allahumma, O oh Allah, but then he speaks to Muhammad. Muhammad, I am seeking Allah's mercy by means of you. Okay? Sahih. He said, this hadith is Hassan Sahih Gharib. We do not know of it except through this route as a narration of Abu Jafar. And he is someone other than Al-Khatmi. And Uthman bin Hunayf is the brother of Sahil bin Hunayf. Now there's another version. This comes from the English translation of Sunan ibn Majah. Right? Now this is online too. I give you an online link, but quoting the book version, volume 2, pages 329, 330. Now not watch this version. Watch this version, guys. Number 1385, hadith number 1385. It was narrated from Uthman bin Hunayf. That a blind man came to the prophet and said to him, pray to Allah to heal me. He said, if you wish to store your reward for the hereafter, that is better. Or if you wish, I will supplicate. In other words, do you, do you accept to be blind and you're going to be rewarded much greatly? Or do you want to be healed now? He goes, supplicate. Now watch what Muhammad tells him to say. He said, so he told him to perform ablution and do it well. And to pray to raqqa, right? And to say this supplication. What does he tell him to say? And I give you the Arabic transliteration because they provide it. Allahumma inni asaluka. But let me give you the English. Allahumma, oh Allah, I ask of you and I turn my face towards you by virtue of the intercession of Muhammad, the Prophet of Mercy. Ya Muhammad, oh Muhammad. It's in Arabic. Ya Muhammadu. Now he's talking to Muhammad. I have turned to my Lord by virtue of your intercession concerning this need of mine, so that it may be met. O oh Allah, accept his inter intercession concerning me. And what's the great? Sahih. Did you catch it? Before I move on? Yeah, this is, uh, man. So, so that when they try to weaken these narrations, you said? No, they can. It's Sahih, but the Salafis don't like him. By the way, let me just turn my internet on my phone. Because it's not on, so we can get strong connection. Because it says poor connection. Hold on. If I drop out, I'll come back right back. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah, we hear you good. Okay, good, good, good. All right. I thought it was going to drop out. Let me just turn on the internet because I see it says I'm dropping like poor connection. So I want to make sure it's good. All righty then. Yeah, I can hear uh, you nice and clear. You're, man, you're all right. More to Merck. Okay, should be on now. All right. So now watch here. Uh, watch here. Notice it's, it gives you the Arabic so you guys don't see. It's not, he's not addressing Muhammad. It's Ya Muhammadu inni qad, right? Then you can go on. To watch, to watch ta tu, ah, my lisp. Guys, if you don't, if you didn't know, I got a lisp. Certain words kill it. Biqa illa rabbi. Anyway, you get it. So the point is, this Muhammad is telling the man, when you pray, speak to me and Allah. Say to Allah, Allahumma, and say, Ya Muhammad. Okay, so it's Sahih. Now, they'll say, well, Muhammad was alive when he did this. Uh, but I'm going to show you the same Uthman ibn Hunayf in the reign of Uthman ibn Affan. 
which began around 650 AD, about 20 years after Muhammad's death, he told the man to say this prayer. Speak to Muhammad now that he's dead. Okay? I'm going to show it to you. But before I get there, I want you to see something interesting. The Muslims will translate this word, Allahumma. And this word, Allahumma, appears five times in the Quran. Five times, Allahumma, appears in the Quran. The Muslims dishonestly translate this word as, O oh Muhammad. Oh, Muhammad, there is a phrase in Arabic that means, I'm sorry, not Muhammad. See, we're thinking Muhammad and God. See, well, Muhammad is Allah. Allah is Muhammad. So I was technically right. I meant to say the word Allahumma is rendered as, oh, Allah, oh, Allah. Now, I'll tell you why that's dishonest. There are two Arabic words in it that are rendered, oh, Allah. It's Ya Allah. Ya Allah means, oh, Allah, right? Allahumma does not mean, O oh Allah. But the Muslims dishonestly translate Al uh, Allahumma as, O oh Allah. The words for, O oh Allah, the phrase for, O oh, oh Allah, and ask any Arabic speaker here, is, Ya Allah. So what in the world does Allahumma mean? Not me, but Muslims have admitted, Allahumma is supposed to be the Arabic equivalent of Elohim. It's plural. You know that? I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. That's good. Because Muhammad, if you take the traditional narrative, was trying to appease the Jews. And in trying to appease the Jews, he wanted to sound like them and behave like them until they turned against him. So he would adopt Arabic cognates of the Hebrew terms. For example, Ahad corresponds to Echad. So when you have Kul, who Allahu, Ahad, Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be the Arabic way of saying, you know, Elohim Echad. Yeah. And okay. the Arabic word Wahid corresponds to the Hebrew Yachid. Mm -hmm. Right? Similarly, Allahumma corresponds to Elohim. Right? And it appears five times in the Quran. Allahumma. It doesn't mean, oh Allah, do not let them deceive you. It doesn't mean that. There, there, there is a phrase, there are words for O oh Allah, it's Ya Allah. Ya means O oh, and Allah. So just wanted to mention that. But let's come back to Muhammad being prayed to directly in the same prayer where the Muslim is speaking to Allah. This prayer, this prayer <clears throat> that Muhammad taught the blind man, do we find any hadiths that's saying that even after Muhammad's death, they were still praying this prayer, this supplication? Yep. Let me get it for you. Let me get it for you. Even after he died? Yep. Yep, yep. This comes from the English translation of the Reliance of the travel Traveler. Riyad Salahin, I believe that. No, no, that's what I'm sorry. That's not Riyad Salahin. My, my, my apologies. Riyad Salahin is, the, is something else. Reliance of the Traveler. I get the two confused, so forgive me for that. Um, Nu Hamim Keller, he's a convert to Islam. Reliance of the Traveler, if you get his English translation, he's got a section on Tawassul. Thank the Lord Jesus, it's online. Let me see. Well, it was online. Let me see if it's defunct. Oh, yeah, it's still online. Guys, let me send it to you, brother. Get, Make sure you download this before it's defunct. Nu Hamim Keller is an enemy to the Salafis. He doesn't like Salafi Islam. Here it is. He does not like Salafi Islam. Okay? Got it. The reason why he doesn't like Salafi Islam is because he believes that they butcher the Islamic sources by making Allah into an embodied soul and denying tawassul. Now, in this section, that's not found in other versions of the Reliance of the Traveler, by the way, if you have a version of Reliance of the Travel done by Salafis, they omit this section. He includes it. So, by the way, they're telling me that my internet connection is not working on YouTube, or is that someone just just make sure? Can you guys, does my sound good on the internet, on your yeah, YouTube? Let, yeah, let us know if uh, the sound is good. It sounds YouTube. good uh, on my end. On YouTube. Okay, okay. Hmm. Okay, so now let me read. This is now after the death of Muhammad. Nuhamim Keller. He's going to quote this. This this is the same prayer that Muhammad taught the blind man, now being offered after Muhammad's death. The hadith of the man in need. 
Now watch, I quote, Moreover, Tabarani in his Al-Mujam al sahir reports a hadith from Uthman ibn Hunayf that a man repeatedly visited Uthman ibn Affan concerning something he needed. But Uthman paid no attention to him or his need. Now, this is during the caliphate of Uthman. Muhammad is dead. The man met Ibn Hunayf and complained to him about the matter. This being after the death we sell of the Prophet and after the caliphates of Abu Bakr Umar. So notice, Abu Bakr, Umar, Muhammad, they're all dead. So Uthman Ibn Hunayf, who was one of the companions who collected hadith and was learned in the religion of Allah, said, so he tells this man who wanted to meet the caliph, Uthman Ibn Affan, right? So Uthman Ibn Hunayf says, you want to meet him? Say this prayer and Allah will grant you a meeting with him. Go to the place of ablution, perform ablution, wudu. Then come to the mosque, masjid, perform two raqqas, a prayer there, and, and say, O oh Allah, Allahumma, I ask and turn to you through our Prophet Muhammad, the Prophet of Mercy. O oh Muhammad, same invocation that Muhammad taught when he was on earth. I turn through you to my Lord that he may fulfill my need and mention your need. Then come so that I can go with you to the Caliph Uthman. So the man left and did as he had been told. Then went to the door of Uthman ibn Affan, and the doorman came, took him by the hand, brought him to Uthman ibn Affan, and seated him next to him on a cushion. Oh, see, praying to Muhammad after he's dead gets results, folks. That's what the hadith is encouraging. Wow. You caught it? Yeah, tawassul, right? Wow. Tawassul, yep. Right? Tawassul. Now, not only did Uthman bring him and said he seated him next to him on a cushion. He saw how powerful it is to pray to Muhammad. Wow. You caught it? Yeah. All right, well, let's continue. Uthman asked, what do you need? And the man mentioned what he wanted, and Uthman accomplished it for him. And he said, then he said, I hadn't remembered your need until just now. You see the miracle of praying to Muhammad and Allah in the same prayer, in the same dua? Allah and his messenger, even though he's physically dead, absent from the earth, calls Uthman to remember and honor this man. Got it? I caught it, man. They pray I just remembered you now. You see? Adding, whenever you need something, just mention it. And not only that, but Allah and his messenger now put it in Uthman's heart to always help this man. You caught it? You guys catching everyone else, not just uh, Avery? Yeah, we got it. All right. yeah. No, but so, Islam is so pure Sam, mana. Sam, where, uh, where will we be able to actually find the actual like hadith to this? Is this online? Yeah, I just gave you the link. It's, yeah, uh, so, in so other so words, it's... he gives you who he narrates it. You can find yeah. it. He's going to give you all those who narrated. And the Muslims admit this. It was Ibn Taymiyyah who tried to weaken it, but to no avail. Because now watch what he's going to tell you. Who? And by the way, the same invocation that Muhammad personally taught the blind man, it's in Ibn Majah and Tirmidhi. I just read it. That's same hadith in Ibn Majah and Tirmidhi, Sahih. It's on sunnah.com. Now this particular one, it's found in these hadith scholars. And I'm sure... You'll find it in Arabic, but Nuham Mim Keller translated the this hadith in his work, and he was going to tell you its classification. So the Muslim can't deny. It. He's going to say, "Yeah, but we don't accept its sound." I mean, meaning the Salafi. But now let me keep keep finishing. Let me get to the point because then Nuham Mim Keller is going to give you the grading. Okay, and then by the way, I have a clip by Hamza Yusuf mentioning this too. I can send it to you. You can play it, Hamza Yusuf. Mentions this very hadith and he mentions Ibn Taymiyyah trying to weaken it. And he says uh, his response was weak and the scholars refuted Ibn Taymiyyah. But let me let me continue. Let me finish it. Then the man departed, met Uthman Ibn Hunayf and said to him, may Allah reward you. He didn't see to my need or pay any attention to me until you spoke with him. Uthman Ibn Hunayf replied, by Allah, I didn't speak to him. It wasn't me. I didn't do you the favor. But I've seen a blind man come to the messenger of Allah. And complained to him of the loss of his eyesight. The prophet said, can you not bear it? And the man replied, O Messenger Allah, I do not have anyone to lead me around, and it is a great hardship for me. The prophet told him, go to the place of ablution and perform ablution wudu. Then pray to raqqas, a prayer, and make the supplications. Ibn Hunayf went on, by Allah, we didn't part company or speak long before the man returned to us as if nothing had ever been wrong with him. Now watch what Nuham Mim Keller says about the hadith. This is an explicit unequivocal text from a prophetic companion. Uthman ibn Hunayf was a sahabi. He was a command of Muhammad. 
proving the legal validity of tawassul through the dead. The account has been classified as rigorously authenticated, Sahih. Beyond any doubt, rigorously authenticated, meaning it was proven beyond any doubt that Sahih. By who? Al-Bayhaqi, Mundiri, and Haythami. Some of the greatest Hadith scholars ever lived. You got it? I see it right here. I see it, man. They can't get around it. So all they're going to say is, well, we don't accept it. But it's Sahih. And so your greatest Muslim scholars of Hadith, the Muhaddathin, Muhaddathun, greatest Muslim scholars of Hadith, rigorously authenticated as Sahih. It is sound. It's only you Salafis who try to weaken it. Now, do you want me to get you the clip by Hamza Yusuf mentioning this? Can you play it or no? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I won't be able to put it on the sound. On uh, oh, Okay. Yeah. So they can't hear it? They won't be able to hear the clubhouse. I, I can actually get it to share on the YouTube, but we'll be quiet. They won't be able to hear us, you know? No, that's okay. If they can hear it, we okay. can go silent for a minute because I want to okay. hear from Hamza Yusuf, okay? All right. Sure, yeah, send it. Now, because Hamza Yusuf is not a Salafi. He is uh, he's an Ashari, and he believes in Tawassul. He's also a Sufi. What he embraces, he does what they call tasawwuf, mm. technical term for Sufism. All right. All right. Here it is. All right. So man, don't hate, bro. Here it hey, is. Hey man, I'm loving this, man. You're doing good. You know, Thank you, got, you, sir. If you problem. say I'm doing good, that means I must be doing good because you know it's your world, sir. <laughs> there are several versions of it. There's a longer one and a shorter one. I'm going to give you the short one because in one day quotes some other Muslim scholar, but I'm just going to give you this particular one. Here it is. All right. You can go with it. It's only six minutes. We want to hear it from the horse's mouth and we'll yep. be silent. So let me send it to you on. Should I put it on YouTube or on Facebook? Uh, send it to me through Facebook and I'll be able to go to. Uh, okay. Facebook. Let me get it for you. Hold on here. Let me hear. And then let's listen from the horse's mouth. He's going to quote this very hadith. All right. And he's going to tell you, well, you know, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah tried to weaken it, but the scholars refuted him. There you go. So let's listen. And let me know when you want me to be silent. All right, just give me one second as I get this up. Okay. Six minutes and 31 seconds, right? Yep. All right, so you want me to play the whole thing? Yeah, because it's it's worth it, because you're going to hear a Muslim scholar confirm what I just said. It's worth it. Six minutes. Perfect. I mean, where are we going to go? Nowhere. All right, all right, for sure. Okay, so we are about to share this link, so we're going to be quiet in a second. <clears throat> our opinion, I mean, when I say our, I'm not putting myself with the ulama, trust me. I mean, our opinion our opinion for people of Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah and the dominant configuration of that uh, because there are people, there are minority opinions within the Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah but the dominant opinion, the opinion that I was taught, the opinion of my teachers is that um, you know, tawassal is permitted uh, to ask the Prophet ﷺ for intercession is permitted things like that, that's, that's what I was taught and that's that's what I believe and that's that's um, I think that is the strongest opinion. It's a weak hadith, but it's related. I mean, it's it's not fabricated hadith. And, and the hadith of Uthman ibn Hunayf is the strongest one because that's a sahih hadith without any debate. And Ibn Taymiyyah's interpretation of it is goes against all the other ulama. So with all due respect to Ibn Taymiyyah, the ulama just rejected that rejection of that hadith. So the hadith of Uthman ibn Hunayf is is a, a sound hadith, and he, the Prophet taught him how to make the du'a to shari'an. He could have made the the shafa' right there because he asked him to intercede for me, but he told him go do wudu when you finish your wudu, pray the rakats, and then pray this prayer: Allahumma inni as'aruka bi nabiyika Muhammad. I ask you through your prophet Muhammad. And then he said, say, Ya Muhammad. And then he said to say that in his dua, Ya Muhammad. 
Bika ira Rabbi. I'm asking your shafa'a, your intercession to my Lord. Allahumma shafa'u fiya wa shafa'ni fi nafsi. Oh Allah, make him my intercessor with you and make me an intercessor also. In other words, make me worthy of interceding for others. And that, that dua is sound dua. It's, it's pretty clear. Well, the, yeah, it's a weak opinion, the other opinion. That, that's a 7th century innovation. Before the 7th century, nobody said that. But to, that, to intercede with the Prophet's not acceptable. That's a 7th century opinion. Before that, none of the Salaf said that. None of them. There's no, nobody can find any word. And if, to ask them to prove that, show some opinion before Ibn Taymiyyah that, that counters that. There's none. And that's the opinion of Imam al-Bayhaqi, all these great ta'unama. I mean, they all have it in their books. And so it's just very strange, but it's become a dominant opinion because of the, the, the books and all the money that has enabled uh, the madhab to spread like that. But it's not the dominant opinion of the, the scholars of Islam by any standard. So it's a khidaf. They don't accept our khilaf, we accept their khilaf. What can I say? You know, if you don't want to do it, that's fine. It's ja'iz, it's not wajib. It's, it's just permissive. When I asked Murat al-Hajj, my own teacher about it, he said ja'iz. <laughs> you want to do it, fine. You don't want to do it, fine. Just don't tell people you can't do it. If they want to do it. Don't tell people you can't do it because you don't have any proof. And the proofs that they use have been refuted very profoundly by the scholars. I mean, it's not saying that they used to call on stones. And those stones, they did it to draw near to Allah. And then they said, who worships the prophet? I don't worship the prophet. And to say that, well, you're asking him to ask God. Well, I ask Sidi Abdul Hadi to ask God. Abdul Hadi, make dua for me, please. Jazakallah khairan. He just made dua. What, is that shirk? So you say, well, the prophet's dead. Not in my belief. That's your belief. That's fine. In my belief, he's hayun fi qabrihi. In my belief, if I say, salamu alaikum, in the sahih hadith, an angel tells him, Hamza Yusuf just said, Salam alaikum, Ya Rasulullah. And he says to me, Hamza Yusuf, Wa alaikum as salam. What is Wa alaikum as salam if it's not dua? It's a dua, peace be upon you. So we know the Prophet makes dua for us. So I, if I want to ask him to make dua for me, that's fine. Don't tell me it's shirk. I don't worship the prophet. You know, I can take penicillin. I don't have to just sit and, and die of some infectious disease because it's shirk, brother. God's the shafi. <laughs> just go straight to God. Why are you going to the penicillin? <laughs> because God put means in the world to, to, to get his blessing. Healing's a blessing, but if he made penicillin a means to that blessing, so be it. And if he made the Prophet a means to that blessing, alhamdulillah. Yeah, but those are actions. Those are things. People forget that tawassul is a fiqh question. It's not an aqidah question. It's not a belief. It's an action. That's why it's dealt with in Hajj. It's dealt with in Bab al-Hajj. It's not dealt with in the books of Aqidah. It's actually dealt with in the books of Fiqh. It's just some people have turned it into an Aqidah question. But it's, it's not. It's an, a question of action. It's a question of action. Is that clear?
So just let us know because it's for you. We're doing this for you. So you heard it from Hamza Yusuf. He said, Muhammad is not dead and he's a means of blessing. He's wow. a means. Yeah, you heard it. And he yeah. said, another thing you heard, I want you to hear what you heard from him. He quoted the same hadith and he says, it is a sound narration beyond any doubt. And then he mentioned something. He goes, it was only questioned by Ibn Taymiyyah in the seventh century. Now, if you don't know what he means by that, seventh century Hijri, meaning this is 600 years after Muhammad's migration to Medina, which took place 622. For 600 years, no Muslim disputed that narration. Ibn Taymiyyah came 600 years later and started questioning it. So he goes, up until Ibn Taymiyyah, 600 years after Muhammad's migration to Medina, no one questioned it. All, all the scholars accepted it and thought it was rigorously authentic. Ibn Taymiyyah was troubled by it, tried to weaken it, but he got refuted. And it's only Ibn Taymiyyah and his ilk, like Uthman and <clears throat> Sheikh As Asim al-Hakim. Those are Salafi that would try to reject it. But he said, uh, for 600 years, everyone accepted it. And the majority of Muslims accept it. Because Muhammad is not dead. In our book, he's alive in another state. And he's a means of blessing. Asbab, they, they call it. A means by which you can procure the blessings of Allah. Like penicillin is a blessing of Allah. A means from Allah to cure you. Allah is the one who cures, but he uses means. So Allah is the one who blesses, but he uses means. And one of those means is Muhammad. You heard it from him, right? Heard it right from his mouth, man. I'm blown away. Yep, and he had no problem with it. No, they don't. They don't because to them, Muhammad is a true prophet. He's alive, right? I mean, in Christianity, we believe those who are in Jesus Christ the Lord are alive, glorified, perfected. So Muhammad stole Islam, stole a lot of biblical truths and Christian teachings, and adopted them as part of the Islamic faith. But here's the problem with Hamza Yusuf. Muhammad is reported to have said, "Dua, supplication, is worship." So when he says he doesn't worship the prophet, he's being inconsistent. And I need you Christians to understand the argument. It is Muhammad who said at dua, supplicating, invoking, is worship. Right. So when you invoke Muhammad, that is a dua to Muhammad. And if you're making dua to Muhammad, Muhammad said that's worship. You are worshiping Muhammad. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. So the Salafis see it. But now they have a problem. These hadiths are authentic. So the Ashari, the Maturidi, and the Shia, they see, well, hey, these are authentic narrations. So Muhammad told us we can make dua to him. Therefore, it can't be worship. But hold on. The Salaf says, yes, it is worship because Muhammad said dua is worship. You see what Muhammad did to his ummah? Yeah. Destroyed it. He put them in a, in a, in a tough situation, man. Tell me about it. Because if, <laughs> if, you, if you perform dua to Muhammad, Muhammad said dua is worship. Yeah. It's the heart of worship. It is worship. That means you worship Muhammad. But then there yeah. are authentic narrations. Muhammad said, make dua to me and Allah. And they did that even after he died. So Muhammad, you just said dua is worship. It's the heart of worship. Yeah. Yes. So you can only worship Allah. That means you should only make dua to Allah. But then you said, make dua to you and Muhammad, and people started doing that while you're alive, in your physical absence, and after your death. So that means you just enjoin us to worship you with Allah. Yeah. So what's going on here? See, that's a dilemma. <laughs> oh, man. So everyone got it? Got it, got it, got it. Got now it. Here, here again in my article on my response to Muhammad Hijab, I give you the link to Riyadh Salehin, the Salafi version of this. And Reliance of the Travel is not Riyadh Salehin, but still, because Riyadh Salehin, you have many versions of it from Salafis and Asharis and Maturidis, and also the same with Reliance of the Traveler. Reliance of the Traveler, Nuhamim Keller translated it, and he is a Sufi and he believes in Tawassul, and therefore he included this section on Tawassul. But now, with that said, this particular section of Riyadh Salehin comes from Sunnah.com, and I give you the link. Right, and, and this is the Salafi version. So the Salafis, what they do, and the other Muslims have noted it. If you don't believe me, put Hamza Yusuf Salafi tampering with Sunni texts. They have noted a pattern. That's why I mentioned a certain group has been spending million dollars. If you remember that in the clip, it's not about the Salafis. So what the Salafis have done, believe it or not, they have taken classical Muslim writings, and they have 
edited those writings to omit these statements that don't agree with their theology and refuse to include them in their English translation. So they're tampering with their own texts. Of course. Of course. And the other Muslims are not Salafi, are irate about it. They are livid. What are you doing to our texts? Why are you now taking Arabic copies and editing them and in English refusing to include these statements that have been in these Arabic texts for centuries and believed on? Because that's Islam for you. That's Salafi Islam. And Salafi Islam is the Islam of Boko Haram. It's the Islam of Al-Qaeda, of ICE, ISIL. It's the Islam of these terrorists. They're all Salafis. Right? So Islam, Salafi Islam, where Salafi Islam spreads, there is destruction, misery, pain, murder, rape, prostitution, in the name of Allah and His Messenger. Right? And they don't even spare other Muslims. Right? But anyway, we can do a session on that. But coming back to the issue, now let's go to Riyadh Salihin. Now watch this. When you pray to Muhammad, I thought Muhammad is dead. No, look what Muhammad said. You guys ready for this? You guys all ready for these references? Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Then we're going to segue into the Quran. And we, we, we have to do another part. There's a lot to talk about. This comes from Book 15 of Riyadh Salahin, the Book of the Remembrance of Allah. It's all there in those articles, guys. Aus bin Aus reported. Aus bin Aus. Talk about a weird name, calling your kids Aus. Ouch! No, Aus. Uh, okay. The Messenger of Allah said, watch this. Among the best of your days is Friday. Juma. Why? So supplicate Allah more often for me in it. For your supplications will be displayed to me. So Allah, Muhammad sees people supplicating for him on Friday. On Friday, when the Muslims ask Allah to pray for Muhammad and his family, like he prayed for Abraham and his family, and send his blessings on Muhammad and his family, like he sent blessings on Abraham's family, Allah allows Muhammad to have a panoramic, panoramic vision and he sees it. Did you catch it? Did everyone get that or no? Or are you like, because it's complete silence? Hold on, say that again, Sam. Allah, Muhammad just said, man, what's wrong with you, dude? Put down the crack bike, son. The son, he just said, supplicate for me on Juma on Friday, for your supplications will be displayed to me. Mm, okay. He will see them. Okay, got it. He will be given a panoramic vision where he sees them praying to Allah to bless Muhammad. Okay? He was asked, O Messenger Allah, how will our blessings be displayed to you when your decayed body will have mixed with the, with the earth? You'll be decayed. You'll be dead. He replied, Allah has prohibited, prohibited the earth from consuming the bodies of the prophets. So Muhammad said, no, my body won't decay. Because Allah does not allow any of the bodies of the prophets to decay. So remember right. this, okay? Keep yep. this in mind. This is narrated by Abu Dawood, okay? Hadith 3. Now, an another one. Abu Huraira reported, the Messenger of Allah said, Do not make my grave a place of festivity. You know, don't have religious festivals around my grave. And supplicate Allah for me, for your supplication reaches me wherever you are. You know that? So according to Muhammad... If Avery is a Muslim, God forbid, may the Lord Jesus save Muslims from Muhammad and all of the Quran. But if he's a Muslim and he's in California, he says, As-salamu alayka ahiyu nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay? Or he says, Oh Allah, send your prayers on Muhammad. Muhammad is told, Avery just prayed for you. Yeah. You guys got it? Avery just prayed for you. Okay? Now, Okay, now watch here. This is another one. All this is in Abu Dawood. Okay. Abu Huraira reported the Messenger of Allah said, Whenever someone greets me, Assalamu alaikum, uh, uh, Ahiyu Nabi, Allah returns the soul to my body in the grave and I return his grading. Alaikum salam, Avery. No, I'm just been reading it, man. It's Again, these are all from Abu Dawood, Book 15 of Riyadh Salahin, Hadith 6. Now watch this. Abu Huraira reported, Abu, I'm sorry, Abu Huraira said that the Messenger of Allah said, whenever anyone greets me with peace, Allah will return my soul to me so that I can return the greeting. Abu Bakr ibn Abi Shayba mentions that Abu Huraira said that the Messenger of Allah said, I will hear whoever blesses me at my grave. So if you go to my grave, I hear you directly. 
I will hear whoever blesses me at my grave. As someone is far away and blesses me, that is also conveyed to me. Ibn Umar said, do a lot of prayer on your prophet every Juma. That's Friday prayer. It is brought to him from you from every Juma, shown to him. One version has, none of you blesses me, but that his prayer is shown to me when he finishes it. Al-Hassan ibn Ali said that the prophet said, bless me wherever you are, your prayer will reach me. One of them mentioned that the name of someone who blesses the prophet is shown to the prophet when he does it. Al-Hassan ibn Ali said, when you enter the mosque, greet the prophet. This is talking about, well, yeah, this is mosque interview, I'm sorry. So when you go to the mosque, greet him. The Messenger of Allah said, do not make my house a place of Eid, you know, festivities, and do not make your house's graves. Bless me wherever you are. Your prayers will reach me wherever you are. So I guess he was talking about the mosque of Muhammad in Medina. It's not clear to me, but I believe that's what it is. Su Suleiman bin Suhyam said that he saw the prophet in a dream and asked him, Messenger of Allah, do you recognize the greeting of those who come to you? He replied, yes, and I answer them. So if you go to the grave, Muhammad recognizes you because Allah shows him. And wow. this comes from Kadi Iyad. Kadi Iyad, all these what I just read, the last ones. Ibn Musa al-Yahsubi, Kitab al-Shifah, bi tarif huquq al-Mustafa. Healing by the recognition of the rights of the chosen one. Translated by Aisha Buley, pages 262 to 263. Okay, there you go. So do Muslims worship Muhammad? You better believe it. When you talk to Muhammad in your prayers to Allah, or you invoke Muhammad by name to intercede for you, that's dua, that's invocation, supplication. And Muhammad said, at dua huwa al ibada. The supplication is the worship. That's why the Salafis and the Ashari's Maturisha are all going at it because on one side, the Shia and the Ashari and the Maturidi say, well, wait, Muhammad said, and authentic narrations that are not weak and you cannot deny them or simply brush them aside. We can ask him and speak to him and seek his intercession now that he's dead and even go to his grave. But then the Salafis say, but Muhammad said that dua is worship and you cannot offer dua supplication to anyone but Allah lest you worship someone alongside of Allah. Incredible. This, you get it? This is sick. All right? <laughs> oh, man. This is sick, Sam. Yeah, it is very sick. But now, to make it worse, and by the way, you got about 139 in your room and you got 52 on YouTube, man. You, you smoking hot, baby. You got over 200. Hey, God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. May you not give us what he deserved, but give us his grace, mercy, and love in Jesus' name for the sake of Jesus our Lord. Now, with that said, said, before you go, before you go on, I, I, I'm speaking to a Muslim in the back channel in my messages. He swears on Allah that he's not a troll and he would like to talk to you on this. About what? About everything that you're talking about. What's uh, there to talk about? I quoted his in the sound narrations. Yes, yeah, so I, I think he most likely disagrees. And Who cares? Say, is it Sahih? Yes. So what is there to talk about? I, I don't get it. So even, even if he comes, which I'll let him come, mm -hmm. I'm quoting your sources and your Muslim scholars who say it's Sahih. So why are you debating me? Contact Nuh Hamim Keller, Ham Yusuf, and take it up with them. I, I don't get it. I'm quoting you what your scholar. No, well, I hear Sam. I want to prove you. Dude, these are your sources and your scholars. Your beef is with them, not with me. But right. let's see what he wants to tell me. Let's see. All right. So his name is. Uh... Is Ulbert down here? So I'm gonna let you up, my friend. Remember, you swore on Allah that you're not a troll, that you'll be cool and direct. Yeah. So be direct when you come up here, my friend. Yep. Don't preach. Welcome to the stage, but my friend. Oh, I think he's a troll. Yeah, he is. He lied to you. No, let's give him this. Let's see. Let's hear him out. Him. Yeah, Everybody. even by Zez image is the one with the Lord. He's. You can see someone mocking. He wants to take attack. So yeah, the mods are ready. If, uh, if, if yeah, if, yeah if, he's he's a troll. Even by his name, Lord and image. But go ahead quickly, dude. What's what's your objection? The mic is yours, Albert. Are you uh you ready to speak? Can you hear me? Hello. Oh, yes, yeah. I can hear you. Okay. Right. okay, peace be upon you, brothers. Okay, uh, so uh, the first hadith oh, yeah. that you quoted, right? Uh, the one that in in which a Sahabi he went to the Usman, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes go ahead, get to the point, uh, dude. Okay. Yes, I'm getting to the point. 
So the uh, this is after the death of the Prophet Muhammad. So uh, you see, uh, in Islam, the, the, there is a sect called the Wahhabis, uh, like the ones uh, the, the currently hold the government in Saudi Arabia. So the, it is mainly their beliefs that they the, think that the, uh, the Sahaba are also masoom in every single way, like the the, the, the prophets uh, are masoom. Friend, uh, Uber, yes, you just repeated yes. exactly what I just said. So can yes, you get exactly. to what your question is? I know. Yes, I, well, yes, so you my, call them Wahhabi, but they call themselves Salafi. What's the question, though? They reject it. I just said they reject it, but it sounds Sahih. So they're rejecting something that sounds. Yes, it so is, what's your... Okay, so uh, in Islam, we are not responsible for what a Sahabi does his individual actions. We have to concur to the Quran and the Hadith. Uh, hadith, you see, it's the saying of the prophets, but there are also the 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 narration that you are quoting right now. Like it, it is a Sahabi's action. It is not. It's uh, not just the Sahabi's that... action. No, 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 no. You're you're distorting it. The Sahabi saw Muhammad tell a blind man, "Say this du'a." So you're still left with a blind man not in the physical presence of Muhammad, speaking to Muhammad in his du'a to Muhammad. You still ignore that part because even... Yes, I am. I okay, am now that. get to that point. No, get to the point where when Muhammad tells him, make this du'a, he goes, performs wudu, and he mentions Muhammad in Allah and speaks to Muhammad Allah in a du'a, and your prophet said du'a is worship. Get to that point. Yes. So this is uh, there are two things in it. The one is the salatu salam that we give to the prophet in our. That's not uh, the one prayers. I'm talking about. No, I'm yes. not talking about. And the another the is tawassul. Another is tawassul or wasila, right? So uh, in this way, uh, we we uh, we uh, say that the because uh, the Allah uh, the prophet of Allah is dear to Allah, so we say that. Uh, so we say and we make dua to Allah that. Uber, oh, Allah, why are you wasting my time? You're not, uh, you didn't friend, hear my, my objection. Uh, okay, I'm let's not, try this again. I'm, Uber, I'm going to give you a final chance and I'm going to send you to Mecca. Maybe you can greet the Prophet in Medina after you kiss the black stone. Let me repeat it again. You didn't hear me. Yes. Dua yes. is ibadah. That's what your Prophet said. Invoking is worship. When you tell me tawassul, you're now admitting my point. The man invoked Muhammad. In his dua to Allah, so he made dua to Muhammad. That's worship. Can you now respond to that? Tell me the exact words, my friend. Uh, tell me the okay. exact. What did he say? Uber, what did do he me say? a favor. Go back down yes. and listen, and ask Allah and His Messenger to help you understand. So, bye bye. Let's go back to the topic. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right, buddy. Are we ready? Yeah, we are. I actually want to want to thank him for not being a troll. He said yeah. he wasn't a troll and he wasn't. So no, but the only problem is he's repeating the points I'm making. So yeah, exactly. I, like if, I hear, if I wanted to hear, if I wanted to hear me, so if I wanted to hear the arguments I made, I go listen to the live stream after yeah. replay. Yeah, he literally said everything that you presented in the articles and everything. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like he was a little late on that or something. Yeah. It's all right. It's okay. Yeah. But I mean, you know, maybe maybe as he invokes all on his messenger, he'll get, uh, you know, some. Maybe. You know, what the heck? I, I can miss the duo. At Ham, yeah. All right. Now, coming back to the issue, let's move to the other part. Now, just a, a, a side note for all of you. Now, this is one of the proofs that Jesus claimed to be God. How? Muhammad said, at dua, huwa al ibadah, that in supplication is worship. Therefore, if supplicating is worship, and Jesus is a Muslim, he never tell anyone to supplicate him. And he would never say to anyone that he would then answer the prayers. But if we find Jesus saying that you supplicate to me and I will answer from heaven, then that's an explicit claim of deity according to Islamic standards. So let's now kill several birds with one stone and use this not just to expose Muhammad as a God alongside Allah, but to show that Jesus claimed to be God according to the canonical gospels, which are historically accurate. Not only inspired, inspired historical accounts on the historical Jesus. Open up for me, brother. Go to John 14, 12 to 14. All right. John 14. 12 to 14. 12 to 14. Let's do it. John 14, 12 to 14. One of my favorite passages. All right. <clears throat> All right. And this is what it says, John 14, chapter, chapter uh, verses 12 to 14. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works 
that I do. And greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Now, pause right there. You already know uh, how to unpack this, but for those who are listening to the first time. Now, notice Jesus says, the reason why they'll do a greater number of the same works that Jesus has been doing, the miracles, is because he's going to the Father. His going to the Father results in the disciples on earth doing a greater number of the same miracles that Jesus had been doing while he was physically on earth. Why? Why is it when he goes to the Father, they'll be able to do greater works? Because 13, 14 tells you. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. So now how's the Father glorified in the Son? Because when you ask Jesus and invoke the authority of Jesus to do a miracle and a miracle takes place, that glorifies Jesus as truly the Son of God and as the perfect revelation of the Father. It brings glory to the Father and Son, showing that Jesus is truly God's Son. And the God revealed in Jesus, He is the true God and not someone else. But did you catch it? I will do it from heaven. I will answer your prayers from heaven. I will, In other words, the disciples don't do the miracles. Jesus is doing the miracles from heaven for them on earth. And, and it's not only Jesus. The reason why we're Trinitarians is because, according to Scripture, the Father... The Son and the Spirit, all three equally, will be doing the miracles, doing the works for believers on earth as the Father and the Son reign in heaven in visible glory with the Holy Spirit present with us. Because here it says, ask in my name, I will do it. So I'm the one going to do the miracles, showing he's all powerful. But now go to John 15, 16. All right, John 15, 16. Yeah. This is what it says here. <clears throat> You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So who's going to do it? The Father's going to do it. But Jesus said in John 14, he's going to do it. That's what he said. Because it's not either or, it's all of the above. That's why when people say, well, who do we pray to? Mm -hmm. You can pray to the Father directly, invoking the authority of Christ to do so. Mm -hmm. Or you can pray to the Father and the Son in the same prayer. Or you can pray to the Son, or you can pray to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Or you can pray to the Spirit. Or you can pray to all of the above. Because the Father is God, the Son is God, the Spirit is God, though not the same person. And being the one God, they possess the same infinite power and do all things together perfectly. So when the Father acts, the Son acts, and the Spirit acts, when the Father hears your prayer, the Son hears your prayer, and the Spirit hears your prayer, because all three are working together in perfect, inseparable unity. Amen. That's why we're Trinitarians. So that was just a side issue. Now, let's get into the Quran. Are we ready? Yes. <laughs> in me power. In, in me power. Now, before I move on, I want just to take a maybe a moment or two. Does anyone have any questions where they need some feedback or clarification? Anybody? Yep. The moment is open right now, guys. Take advantage. And me power. <laughs> take advantage. Nobody, huh? And remember, we have all the references are in the YouTube link. It's in the live chat for you guys to go back to. But right now, do you guys have any questions? For Sam, that he could clarify, maybe he went a little bit too fast on you know he's not that smooth. So, is there so something you want? Smooth like you, man. You a smooth like, operator, bro. Gotta I'm be like squirrel. butter, man. Gotta squirrel. be like butter. <laughs> squirrel. Nobody. So, if nobody, then going once, going twice. All right. Now you, your guys is silent means one of two things: either you're just bored and I put you to sleep, or God is blowing you away with the material. Which is it, guys? Taking notes, Brother Sam, we're taking notes. All right. And don't forget, though, all the notes are also there in the articles for you. But it's good. Some people learn by writing stuff down. Yeah, I, I like to write your stuff down, man. It, it, it gets in, you know, in my head when I write it. Squirrel! <laughs> Let's do it right. here. Okay, so with that, now, now let's talk about the Quran. Now, there's some preliminary remarks when it comes to the Quran. And I'm probably going to shock some of you. You probably don't know this already. Because I'm going to turn the tables against them. I like to take the very arguments they use against the Bible and turn against them to show them if they're consistent, their arguments will destroy the Quran, decimate the Quran. Okay? Their arguments. Right? 
So number one, are you aware, and you guys are going to be shocked, and I just sent you the article, by the way, and uh, you can, I'll share it in, in YouTube. Do you know, and again, I know it's going to be shocking. That's why I'm going to let a Muslim come and answer the question, but he's got to answer the question. I'm gonna, I want a Muslim answer the question. Don't tap dance, please, and don't preach me a sermon. If I want to hear a sermon that puts me to sleep, I'll let Avery preach to me. But anyway, <laughs> are you aware there's not a single verse in the Quran? Listen to me carefully, guys, because I don't want the Muslims to represent me. Are you aware there's not a single verse in the Quran where the Quran says the Quran is the word of Allah? So Muslims, I know there are some Muslims here. Can you come up to the mic? Give me the eye of the verse where it says the Quran is the word of Allah. Because I'm going to play your game against you and turn your arguments against you. Is there a Muslim here? All right. Any, any Muslim want to raise your hand? We'll bring you up. Yeah, please answer the question. Show me a verse where the Quran says the Quran is the word of Allah. Please. I, see I know what you're, you're going to quote. Universal. I know what they're going to quote. And none of those passages prove their point. I'll even tell one verse that they're going to quote. Surah Al-Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 6. Sorry, doesn't work. <laughs> okay, so if there is no Muslims to take me up, I want you to challenge the Muslims. Show me a verse in the Quran where the Quran says, the Quran is the word of Allah. That's my first challenge. My second challenge. Show me the Quran where the Quran tells you what the Quran is. Meaning, how many chapters make up the Quran and how many verses make up each chapter. Yeah. So we let Muslims get away with murder. Because they play the same game with us. They tell us, they tell us, well, where does the Bible call itself Bible, right? Mm -hmm. And where does it call itself the Holy Bible? Do you guys want me to answer that, by the way? It does. The yeah. Bible. In the John, Bible. Right? Not only in John. The Bible, or let me be more specific. Specific books of the Bible identify <clears throat> themselves as the Bible or refer to other books as the Bible and calls the scriptures holy. So the Bible does call itself the Holy Bible. Now, I've got an article on this too, and I'll send it to you, but I just gave you one related to the Quran. And that's why I'm turning this argument against them because they'll tell you, see, the Quran says this is the Quran, but hold on. When it says this is the Quran, it's referring to that particular chapter. But it's not telling you that this Quran consists of 114 chapters. So how do you know that the Quran is composed of 114 chapters only? And how do you know how many verses make up each chapter? The Quran doesn't tell you that. Mm -hmm. Secondly, where does the Quran say that the Quran is the word of Allah? The Quran doesn't say it's the word of Allah. In fact, it says that it's the word of a noble messenger. It doesn't say it's the word of Allah. You guys know that? Wow. And I'm going I'm to get there. What do you want me to do first? You want me to show you where the Bible claims to be the Bible? And holy? Yes. Okay. Yeah, 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 let's do that. Okay, first, let's see where the Bible claims to be holy and that it calls itself the Bible. First of all, literal history lesson. The term Bible comes from the Latin Biblia. Mm -hmm. Biblia. In Latin, Biblia means book. That's all it means. Bible comes from Biblia. It's a transliterated word. Biblia means book, and it is a Latin loan word from the Greek Biblia, right? Which is plural in Greek. It means books, and it comes from the word Biblos. So the word Bible comes from Latin, from Greek. Greek, it's Biblos, Biblia, plural in Greek, Biblia in Latin, singular, and it only means book. So basically, when you say Holy Bible, you mean Holy Book. That's all, you, that's all it means. So where do we find in the Greek New Testament where the word Biblos, Biblion, Biblia, book, small book, books, are used to refer to the books of the Bible? Oh, all over. And where does the Bible refer to the scriptures as holy? Read for me Romans 1, verse 2, if you can. All right. Romans 1, <clears throat> verse, verse number two. 2. It says, uh, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So there's the word holy. Yes. So at least as far as the Old Testament Scriptures are concerned, it's called holy. Now go to 2 Timothy 3, verse 15. But read 14 to 17. All right. So 2 Timothy 3, he said uh, 13 or 14? Yep. All right. While evil people and imposters will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. <laughs> but as for you, 
Continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it. Uh, you won't? Won't? Yeah, yeah. I told you 17, L for love, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings. Holy scriptures, sacred writings, holy. Now, some will say, well, he's only limiting it to the Old Testament, that these sacred writings, because it says the scriptures he knew since his childhood, right? Yes, yes. Now I'm going to prove to you when Paul says the scriptures that are holy that Timothy knew since his childhood, he's not limiting it to the Old Testament, but he's referring to all the scriptures up until the time of Paul's writing. I'm going to prove that to you. That he's saying, yeah, the scriptures he knew as a child, the Old Testament, they're holy, but also all the scriptures subsequent to that time that God has revealed, including books of the New Testament. I'm going to prove that to you guys, but we're not going to belabor it. I'm just going to give you a few nuggets and I'll give you the article where I go in depth. And we can do a session on this in the future, Lord willing. So the Holy Scriptures, not only those scriptures that are holy that you've read since childhood, the Old Testament, but subsequent scriptures that God has inspired since then, which would also include Paul's writing. I'm going to prove that. So they're holy, and these scriptures were produced with this characteristic of enabling you to know how to be saved through faith in Jesus Christ. Because to finish the verse. Okay. <clears throat> So it says, uh, uh, the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by, by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So... Scriptures are holy, and the scriptures are given to give you the wisdom to know who Jesus is and trust in Jesus and live for Jesus because he's your salvation and know how to live a life pleasing to him. Okay. Yeah. Now, what's the proof that these holy scriptures are not limited to the Old Testament but also include the books of the New Testament? Why don't you go to 1 Timothy 5, verse 18? 1 Timothy 5, verse 18. <clears throat> for the scripture says, uh, the one sound for the scripture says singular shall... now got before I emphasize hmm. it's scripture singular mm -hmm. and now paul is going to quote deuteronomy 25 verse 4 4 <laughs> verse four. yeah and he's going to quote now i don't want you to mention it another old testament i'm uh, not old testament right, another citation he's going to quote two verses and he calls both of them scripture singular mm -hmm. all right so read in verse 18 for the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain. That's Deuteronomy 25, 4. That's Moses. And the laborer deserves his wages. That second citation is, if you compare the Greek, it's word for word verbatim, Luke 10, verse 7. He's quoting mm -hmm. Luke 10, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Now go to Luke 10, verse 7. That means in his first letter to Timothy... He's already quoted the gospel of Luke, put it on the same level with Moses, and called them together scripture. So that in 2 Timothy, when he speaks of scriptures, he most definitely is including at least Luke. Because here he's quoting Luke 10, 7, the words of our Lord. Yep. Now compare Luke 10, 7 with what you just read from Paul. All right. Listen up, everybody. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide for, or what they provide. For the laborer deserves his wages. Word for word, verbatim, what Paul quoted in 1 Timothy 5.18. And Paul quotes, quotes Luke's gospel that contains the saying of our Lord, Scripture, and puts it on the same level of Moses. Now, if that doesn't astonish you, I don't know what would, because number one, Luke was not a prophet. He was not an apostle. He's a companion of the apostles. And number two, he's not a Jew. He's a Gentile, a Greek physician. For a Jew to quote the writing of a Greek, and put it on the same level with the writing of Moses would be something astonishing. Yeah, that's incredible. Right? That is incredible. Now, wh why did he quote Luke's gospel, not Matthew? Because Matthew has the same saying of Jesus in Matthew 10.10. 10. Because 2 Timothy 4.10 tells you why. Go to 2 Timothy 4.10. 2 Timothy 4.10, all right. Why did he quote Luke's gospel with the contains this form of Jesus saying and not Matthew? Because Matthew also reports this, the same saying, right? Because here's why, 2 Timothy 4.10, who's with Luke, uh, who's with Paul? For Demas, in love. 
All the way to 11. Verse 10 and 11. Okay, verse 10 and 11. Yep. For Demas, in love with the, this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia. Titus to Dalmatia. Verse 11, Luke alone is with me. That's why he's quoting Luke's gospel, because Luke is there. Yeah, makes sense. Of course, he's going to quote Luke's gospel, because Luke is with him. And therefore, he'd be reading Luke's gospel. But now notice, Luke not only knows Paul, he knows Timothy, to whom Paul is writing. But Luke also knows Mark, another gospel writer, because right there in verse 11, he goes, Luke alone is with me. Bring Mark. Mm -hmm. Yep, it says, Finish it. it says, get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for ministry. Wow, so Timothy, Mark, Luke and Paul all knew one another. Yeah. Which means Luke would have known Mark's gospel and would have used it as a source with Mark's approval. Yeah. Incredible. And yet Luke is not an apostle. He's a Greek, follower apostle, and he wrote, he, he wrote scripture. Glory to God. Now we got Angel Colbert manifesting like a demon. And I'm about to muzzle him in YouTube because I'm going to show you where the Bible calls itself Bible. Calm yourself down before I calm Muhammad down by the grace of Jesus Christ. Now... For the rest of you who are listening attentively, you got to see where the Bible calls itself holy and where even books that became part of the New Testament are classified as Scripture, breathed out by God, and therefore holy. Everyone got it? Yep. Amen. Okay. Now, where does it call itself Bible? And by the way, notice that Paul doesn't have to mention where he's writing from because he assumes that Timothy is so familiar with these writings that Timothy would know the source. Exactly. Just like everyone knows Moses. So he didn't have to say, oh, the book. That means Luke was circulating to such an extent they already knew its contents. And right. Paul, all, all Paul had to do was quote it. Right. Everyone good. got it? Yeah. Now, where does the Bible call itself Bible? Now, again, you're going to have to look at the Greek to confirm it. Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. Yep. The word Bible comes from Biblos, which means small book, right? Mm -hmm. um, Biblos means book. I'm sorry. Biblion means, means small book. Biblia books, plural. Okay. So yep. if you go to Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, what does it say? It says the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Guess what it's in Greek? Biblia. In Greek, it's the Bible of the genealogy of, I'm sorry. The Say it again. I'm, I'm sorry. Look it up. Biblia. Biblia. The, yep. the, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. It's actually the Greek. Look at it up. Don't take my word for it. It's the Bible of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. The word is Bible. It's right there. Not lying. The word there is Bible. It's not lying. Yep. John 20, 30 to 31. And I can give you dozens of references, but I'm just going to give you some for the sake of time. So the Bible calls itself Bible, and the Bible calls itself holy. Now, the only problem is we're not told the extent of the canon, meaning... How many books God inspired and combined together to form the Bible? That requires studying church history and looking at the men of God that God appointed to pass on the scriptures they received from the apostles and their companions and preserve them. But my point is basically that the Bible does refer to the books that formed the Old Testament or eventually became part of the New Testament as the Bible and holy. So now go to John 20, 30 to 31. John 20, 30 to 31, it says, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. Guess what the word in Greek for book is? Bible. Because. It's not written in this Bible. So John calls his gospel the Bible in this Bible. Okay. Yep. Now keep reading. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Now go to Revelation 22, 18 to 19. All right. Revelation 22, 18 to 19. And it reads, I warn everyone. Who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. And Greek is Bible. This Bible. Bible. Yep. 
He's not lying, guys. The reference is right there. You guys can check it out on Bible Hub. Um, <clears throat> if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. Bible. <laughs> and if anyone takes away from the words of the book or Bible of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this Bible. Bible. Yep, Bible. So there you go. I can give you more. I just gave you guys the link. I put in the YouTube and I sent it to him where I wrote an article on this. Does the Bible call itself the Holy Bible? Yes. Because again, let me repeat real quickly. and We're going to go back to the Quran. That's why I said I'm going to have to probably do another part. <clears throat> the word Bible comes from Latin Biblia. Biblia means book. That Latin comes from the Greek Biblia, and in Greek it's plural, it means books. The singular is Biblos, and Biblion, it means small book. So the Bible simply means book. That's all it means. So when you say Holy Bible, you're saying Holy Book, but it's a combination of Holy Books in one. Why do we call it book, not books? Because ultimately, these different books have one author, the Holy Spirit, working through human <clears throat> authors to give us God's perfect word. So yes, you can say books, but ultimately it's one book because all of these books have one divine source, the triune God. So holy Bible means holy book. Now the Arabic term for book Bible would be kitab. Yes, sir. Kitab. Now guess why this is astonishing folks. In order to really bury this argument and send Muslims running to Mecca, unless they repent and turn to Jesus. They produced a Greek version of the Quran. And guess what the Greek version of the Quran calls kitab in Greek? Bible. <laughs> here's my article on it. I'm getting sick of saying, here's my article. It's like, man, come on, dude. Get off your horse. I went to the online Greek Quran. Greek Quran, because they've translated the Quran in Greek. May the Lord Jesus save Greeks from Islam and Muhammad and bring him, bring them to his feet in Jesus' name. The Greek Quran rendered the Arabic kitab as Biblos, Biblia, Biblian, i.e. Bible. Here it is. Ain't that amazing? It's amazing. Alhamdulillah. All ham to Allah, brother. All ham to Allah. All right, now let me give it to you. Here it is, guys. Guys, please make yourself <clears throat> conversant with the materials. Take these articles. Use them. They're yours. I did it for you. Use it. Give God the glory, not us. Everything good is from our Lord. He gets the glory. So you have no reason not to be equipped. I mean, what else you want? I even gave you an article using the Greek Quran to prove the Bible. I mean, come on, man. Right? Now. Now that we got that out of the way, I'm turning the argument against the Muslims. Now, Muslims, I'm now going to hold you accountable. Show me where the Quran says the Quran is the word of Allah. Show me where the Quran tells you what the Quran is, meaning how many chapters make up the Quran and how many verses. Don't waste your time. You can't. It's not there. Some people tried, but they failed miserably because they didn't understand my argument. One of the verses they cite is chapter 9, verse 6. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't tell you it's referring to the Quran. You have to assume that. In chapter 9, verse 6, do you want to read it from my article or do you want to read it? Uh, yeah, I, I got it right here. Okay, it, read says, it. it says, and if any one of the mushrikeen <clears throat> seeks your... Don't read the comments in parentheses and brackets, dude. That's not the Arabic Quran. Yeah, I, I skipped the brackets, actually. Okay, good. Yeah, because mushrikeen, that was obviously Halali Khan. They are the ones who translated yeah, it. Yeah, let me uh, get the, uh, the regular one. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Read from your article. Okay, here, here it is. Guys, pay attention. If any one of the idolaters seeketh thy protection, your protection. Whose protection? We don't know. It's not. We're not told. Then protect him so that he may hear the word of Allah. Kalam Allah. Okay, what's the word of Allah here? You're going to tell me the Quran. Prove it. Prove to me that the word of Allah that they're going to hear is the Quran as opposed to the gospel or the Torah of Moses. How do you know? You can't. Using the Quran, you don't know. Right. right? But then they'll say, oh, but the Quran says it was sent down from... Our Lord, for example, chapter 12, verse 2. We have sent it down as an Arabic Quran in order that you may learn wisdom. Okay, that's fine. But that doesn't tell me what the Quran is. Okay, when it's sent down the Quran, you have to show me that this Quran is the 114 chapters 
and all the verses found in each chapter, and that's the Quran he sent down. To quote me a verse that says we sent down the Quran, okay, but what's the Quran? Right. How long is the Quran? How many chapters? How many verses? The Quran doesn't tell you. It doesn't tell you. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Again, Muslims, the invite is open for you guys to come. To up answer here the question directly. Don't preach. Don't, don't tap dance. Don't give me any, you know, yep. Sufi, you know, chance. If you have a straightforward verse that shuts Sam up, yep. and I know we're tired of hearing them, come shut him up. Please. Bring a verse. But can I tell you that at least certain sections of the Quran are said to be not the words of Allah, the words of someone else? Can I prove that to you? Prove it. Prove it, you cat. Chapter, you, you mushrik, you manafik. Chapter 69, verse 40, guys. It is the speech of a noble messenger. Qawlu rasulin karimin. Unless you believe Allah is a messenger that says that this surah that I just read, it's a speech of a noble messenger. No. 69, verse 40. Yeah, read it. 69 verse 40. Hey, uh, one second. Ad, would you like to come up and answer the question, or you just want me to toss you out of the room now? Yeah, answer directly. He rejected friend. it. Uh -huh. I invited him. He rejected it. Who's, who's that? That Ab guy. Uh -huh. Ab daddy. <laughs> okay, so read it for your translation. What does it say? You said, uh, I'm sorry, what was the verse again, Sam? 69 verse 40. Said verse 40, all right. <clears throat> It is the speech of a noble messenger. Thank you. So is Allah a messenger? Uh, I'm going to say yes. Well, you got to be if you're going to say that the Quran is Allah's speech because it says this speech, at least this surah, because we don't know how long the speech is. We're not told. But at least that surah you're reading, we're told it's the speech of a noble messenger. What about chapter 81, verses 19 to 20? Can I read it? Yep. 81, 19 to 20. Okay, truly, this is the word Qawlu, of a noble messenger, Rasulin Kareemin, having power with the Lord of the throne secure. So, notice it even tells you he's not Allah because he has power with the Lord of the throne secure. 81 19 to 20. So, where does the Quran say the Quran is the word of Allah, right? And where does the Quran tell you how many chapters make up the Quran and many verses make up each chapter? Uh, you're giving me too many weapons, Sam. Yeah, to destroy Islam. Now, you got some guy. I don't know if you know him. He says SF Bay Area Dawah. I guess he's from the Bay Area. Now, if he's man enough to come on, let him come. Notice he wants to change the subject. The Bible's full of contradiction. Well, that means Muhammad is a demon because Muhammad confirmed my Bible. But thank you for proving Muhammad is a demon because he didn't know any better. You know more than him because the Bible's full of contradictions. The very Bible he said is God's uncorrupt word. So now why don't you spit on Muhammad with me? <laughs> Yeah, because these guys have no respect for their prophet. If you respected your prophet, you wouldn't make it easier for me to destroy him by this stupid argument. If the Bible is full of contradictions, you bury the Quran and Muhammad, because Muhammad and the Quran say the scriptures of the Jews and Christians are the uncorrupt, perfectly preserved words of God. But you just told me those scriptures that they had is which what I have. They're full of contradictions, which means Muhammad is full of it. All right. So he is, but for other reasons. Here, I agree with Muhammad. He's right. The Bible is not corrupt. But that's all you can do. Run to the Bible, you cowards, like you just did in the comment section. Because you can't defend your trash. Nope. That's why you hate us and can't stand us and would like to kill us. But our lives are in the hands of Jesus. I love it. All right. So there you go. Now, let me now prove to you. To you. Ooh, my ears. From certain chirac to the Quran. Because it's all preparing for the Quran and the embarrassment. The Quran is another, wait, wait, wait. You know, another wait, God. Wait, wait, wait. What was that second verse? That, uh, 89, 81, 81, 19 to 20, sir. You better not drop the roll. Or drop the 81, ball. 81, 19 to 20. Thank you. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, now I'm going to quote to you certain chapters of the Quran that if you just read them, there's no way in the world you're going to think these are revelations. You're going to think these are some rantings of some person. But because it's part of your Quran, you think this is the Quran because someone put it there. And because it's between two covers, oh, this is the Quran. But I'm going to read some surahs for you. They're not long. They're near the end. And for the life of me, tell me what in those surahs would indicate that these are statements claiming to be from God, even though we don't believe Allah of the Quran is God. I'm going to read them. And then we're going to go into the Quran being another ilah besides Allah. But I just want to set it up. 
here you go. Let's start reading. Shall we? You guys ready? I, actually, we. Uh, yes. I got some messages um, about some verses. Go give them to me. <laughs> uh, it's not. It's not. So he quoted uh, chapter fifteen, verse nine. That's in say Quran. And even if it said Quran, let me address that because it was a count. So the chapter 15 verse 9 again shows you're either dishonest or ignorant. It doesn't say we sent down the Quran. The word's not Quran. It says we sent down dhikr mm -hmm. and we will surely guard it. Even if it said the said Quran, it still doesn't tell me what the Quran is, how many chapters make up the Quran. Nor did it say that this Quran is the word of Allah. It simply said he sent it down. But it didn't even say the Quran. It says we sent down dhikr, a dhikr, the reminder, the remembrance. Next, that doesn't work. And then again, what is it? What is the reminder? Because the Torah... And I can, the by the way, I can prove it from, from the Quran that the dhikr means the Bible. Yeah. But what's the other one? Uh, the other one was th chapter 38, verse 29, which doesn't say Quran. A book we have sent down to thee, blessed, uh, that men possessed of minds may ponder its signs and so on. No, even, let's go with it. D means Muhammad. Even though we don't know it's Muhammad, you think it's Muhammad. It doesn't say this book is the word of Allah. It says it's a book we sent down, and it doesn't tell us how many chapters make up the book. What are you not getting? Do you understand my challenge? Yeah. A book we sent down to the, okay, the book. How many chapters make up the book? Show me from that surah. What are you not getting? And where does it say this book is the word of Allah? Exactly. So what are you not getting? I know your arguments. It's pathetic. Hear what I'm telling you. Don't attack straw man. See why I say these arguments are refutable, folks? They can't refute them. See? Yep. And Any other it. verses? Nope. That's all I got so far. They don't have. That's because I. That's how. That's now I know what they're going to say. Because yep. they're not listening. Your religion is a joke. Your prophet is under the feet of Jesus. He's burning in hell. Repent. Jesus loves you. We're doing it so you can wake up. Give, abandon this antichrist, the sexual deviant. If not, you're going to suffer the judgment of the Lord like he is already because he's already under the feet of Jesus. Praise the name of the Son of God. So are we ready now? Yep, we're ready. Okay. I'm going to read a, a, a section of surahs, guys. If these surahs were not between two covers of the Quran, no one in their right mind would think that these surahs are claiming to be the words of, of God. Here, let me prove it to you. I'm going to challenge the Muslims. Tell me what in these surahs show you that these are the words of God. Okay, here you go. Chapter 98. Okay. The unbelievers of the people of the book and the idolaters would never leave off till the clear signs came to them. A messenger from God reciting pages purified. They're in true books. And they scattered not those that were given the book, excepting after the clear sign came to them. They were commanded only to serve God, making the religion his sincerely, men of pure faith, and to perform the prayer and pay the alms. That is the religion of the true. The unbelievers of the people of the book and the idolaters shall be in the fire of Gehenna. They're in dwelling forever. Those are the worst of creatures. But those who believe and do righteous deeds, those are the best of creatures. Their recompense is with their Lord, gardens of Eden, underneath which rivers flow. They're in dwelling forever and ever. God is well pleased with them, and they are well pleased with him. That is for him who fears his Lord. What in this chapter indicates that it's God speaking, and these are the words of God? Someone reading it would think it's someone else talking about God and what will happen to those who oppose God. Yeah, my common sense was telling me that it was somebody talking about, talking about God. Yeah, and if you didn't have it in the Quran, you're not going to say this is a surah of the Quran. These are just some ramblings of some man saying Jews and Christians who aren't believers are damned to hell and God's going to punish them. Right. What what in these words? Right. What in these words show that it's from Allah or God? All right. OK, now let's continue a couple more surahs. This is all preparing you for the Quran of Zither Allah. If I finish it this session, we can. If not, we'll do another one. But anyway. We'll do another one. I'm open for another one, Sam. You know we're here. All right. Or we can do other topics too as well if we finish. She yes. keeps saying Nas Khan, chapter 20, verse 2. Can you read chapter 20, verse 2 for the life of me? See, Nas Khan's going to get blocked for not getting it. All right. Chapter. Okay, Nas Khan, here we go. Chapter 20, verse 2. Chapter 20, verse 2. And read verse 1 for good measure if you want. Okay. 
1 and 2. <clears throat> Verse 1. Uh, ta ha. Ha ha. Verse... It's really ha ha. <laughs> Verse 2. Um, <clears throat> we have not sent down the Quran upon thee for thee to be unprosperous. Okay. Now, either Naz Khan is being stupid and illiterate like Muhammad because he's an Ummi or dishonest. Did you understand my challenge? I didn't say, show me a verse where Allah says he sent down the Quran. I said, show me a verse where Allah says the Quran is the word of Allah. And then show me a verse where the Quran says, how many chapters make up the Quran? What are you not getting? And why are you wasting our time? Mm -hmm. See? Now that we shut you up, move on or listen and repent and turn to Jesus Christ. Okay, now let's go to another one. Chapter 99. Now, guys, again, if these chapters were just read randomly and no one told you it's part of the Quran, the last thing you're going to say is, oh, this is Quran. The last thing you're going to say. Here, let me prove it to you. Let's just read, okay? Here you go. Chapter 99. When earth is shaken with a mighty shaking and earth brings forth her burdens and man says, what ails her? Upon that day, she shall tell her tidings for that her Lord inspired her. Upon that day, man shall issue in scatterings to see their works. And whoso has done an Adam's weight of good shall see it. And whoso has done an Adam's weight of evil shall see it. What in the world would make you think these are the words of God? Anyone? Tell me. What did you hear in those words that said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's Quran? <laughs> Nonsense. It's someone talking. Hey, you're going to be judged by law and an Adam's weight of good. You'll be judged. All right. Anyone can say that. I can quote you books, Jews and Christians who are not inspired. Scholars, theologians saying, yes, if you don't fear God, God is going to judge you for everything you've done. Oh, see, that's Bible. <gasps> oh, that's Torah. <gasps> Everyone got it? Let me give you this one. Now, this one's hilarious. All right. Now, who's laughing at the Quran? How dare you, Kafir? Oops, man. It's just I can't help it. I tried to hold it. Okay. Now watch this one, chapter 100. Chapter 100, all right? Chapter this 100. is going to surely convince you it's from Allah. Okay? Chapter 100. By the snorting chargers, by the strikers of fire, by the dawn raiders, a blazing trail of dust, cleaving there with the host, surely man is ungrateful to his Lord. And surely he's a witness against that. Surely he is passionate in his love for good things. Knows he not that when that which is in the tombs is overthrown and that which is in the breast is brought out, Surely on that day their Lord shall be aware of them. Take beer. <laughs> How dare you laugh at the crown? Of your <laughs> oh, the holy and clear ayats of Allah. Uh, for the life of me, what the hell are snorting chargers? The Quran is detailed and explained, Sam. Okay. Right. I don't think you understand that. Your heart is diseased. It is disease. What do you want me to do, man? How about how about strikers of fire? Who the hell are the strike or dawn raiders? Okay. Uh, what where in this surah did you see any indication these are the words of Allah and part of the Quran? Couple more guys. Okay, chapter 100. Oh, no, I read chapter one. I'm sorry. See, you see, I'm so discombobulated because of the impact of me, you know. Chapter 101. One oh was the one before that. Uh, that was chapter 100. No, 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 before 100. I will smash you, chapter 98. All right, 98, there we go. And I'll smash you, and then I'll repent. And then it was chapter 99. Chapter <laughs> 98, no, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, chapter 98, 99. My apologies. That's what I, okay, so I was right. 98, 99, 100. Okay, right. now here's 101. Sorry, guys. Sorry, bro. The Quran is like shocking me. I'm like ready to take shahada. <laughs> it's all right. Okay. You thought that was funny. How about this one? All right, go ahead. 101, you ready? Yep, yep, yep. All right. You better not laugh at the Quran. I'm going to get the Muslims after you, okay? Here goes the clatterer. What is the clatterer? <laughs> what? Wait. Hold on. Why are you count. laughing, bro? That didn't count. You got to start over. You can't laugh, man. We're going to be here till midnight. All right, all right, go. Okay, here it goes. The clatterer. What is the clatterer? And what shall teach thee what is the clatterer? The day that men shall be like scattered moths, and the mountains shall be like plucked wool tufts. What the hell is that? <laughs> then he whose deeds. Way heavy is in the balance, shall inherit a pleasing light. But he whose deeds weigh light in the balance shall plunge in the womb of the bit, 
pit. And what shall teach thee what is the pit? A blazing fire. <laughs> Allahu alam. That's a that was day. that was great. We we got a snap for that that performance. I keep doing that. I'm gonna lose my voice. Oh man. Okay, we got three more to read just to show you. So note these surahs. Nothing in them say they are sent down. They are Quran. The words of Allah. It's just the ramblings of somebody. But before we before Sam, before we get to that, we have a. I want to thank everyone for the super chats that they're giving us. God bless you all. Uh, they they have a question regarding this. Um, why so religious? Asks Sam. How could it be explained that Pharaoh spoke the perfect words of Allah yeah. without revelation? Does it mean a disbeliever's speech equals Allah's? Yeah, what he's talking about, for those of you who don't know, in the Quran, it quotes the words of others. For example, there's a chapter called the chapter of the genies, mm -hmm. Surah Al-Jinn. And there, the Quran quotes what the genies say, and then it'll quote the words of Satan, Iblis, and it'll quote the words of Pharaoh. But when the Quran quotes them, they're all speaking Quranic Arabic. Mm -hmm. So that either means Allah make up, made up their speeches or they were actually speaking identically to the way Allah speaks. Mm -hmm. So you understand the logic here? What he's trying to say is, okay, hold on. When I read the Quran, this is Pharaoh speaking. But why is the Pharaoh sounding like Allah's speech, the Quran? Either Allah made up the speech or Allah's accurately quoting the Pharaoh, but when he's quoting the Pharaoh, the Pharaoh sounds it's as if he's speaking Quran. Arabic Quran. Mm -hmm. See, that's what he's getting at. And then on top of that, sur sur in chapter 46 and chapter 72, there it records the words of the genies. So the genies speak Quranic Arabic, but I was told last time I checked in 1788, if all of mankind and the genies got together, they could not produce the like of the Quran. But here in chapter 72 and 46, a group of genies are speaking Quranic Arabic exactly like Allah. But in 1788, we're told, if you bring all the genies and mankind together, they cannot produce the like of the Quran. But then Allah is quoting genies who sound exactly like him speaking Quranic Arabic. So which, which is it? Mm -hmm. wow. Which is it? Allah Allah. So that's his point. So yeah, that was his point. So let me go through these surahs real quickly. Real, real quickly. And then we'll see. If you want me to go on for another hour, it's up to you. Or you want me to do a part five on Quran being a Elah? Because I had to set this all up. Here it is, chapter 102. Did I read? No, I didn't. Okay, here, chapter 102. I can't do the animation again. I'm going to lose my voice. Right? Oh, okay. Okay. Gross. I'll do it like these acad academians. Ac academician. 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 Gross rivalry diverts you, hmm? even till you visit the tombs. No, indeed, but soon you shall know. Oh, yes, soon you shall know. <laughs> no, indeed, but soon you shall know. Again, no, indeed, but soon you shall know. No, indeed. Okay, we got it the first three times, buddy. No, indeed. Did you know with the knowledge of certainty? Hmm, did you? Ha, ha, go ahead. Hmm? Did you know with the knowledge of certainty? You shall surely see hell. Again, you shall surely see it with the eye of certainty. Then you shall be questioned that day concerning true bliss. Why are you laughing, bro? Uh, the poetry is just excellent. There's nothing like the Quran. I challenge anyone to bring a chapter like it, a verse okay. like it. All right. Well, if that didn't convince you this is a Quran revealed by Allah, here it is, chapter 103. By the afternoon, mind you, not evening, not morning. By the afternoon, surely man is in the way of loss. So he only gets lost in the afternoon. Because in the desert, the heat is so bad that he gets discombobulated. So understand the logic, the beauty, you Kafir. It's only by the afternoon that man is in loss. By the afternoon, surely man is in the way of loss. Save those who will. Sir, can I finish the Quran, sir? Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> Save those who believe and do righteous deeds and counsel each other unto the truth and counsel each other to be set fast. <laughs> See, three verses. Then not just jump out right at you. Quran, baby. Quran, Quran. <clears throat> okay. yeah. Anything in these surahs that would lead you to think these are surahs of the Quran? Nothing whatsoever. It's just because someone put them in the book 
that you buy into it. You bought it hook, line, and sinker, right? Chapter 104. This one is about the backbiter and slander. So be careful, Avery. You better not backbite me behind my back, you little slanderer, you. All right. <laughs> Woe unto every backbiter and slanderer who has gathered riches and counted them over, thinking his riches have made him immortal. No, indeed, he shall be thrust into the crusher. The crusher, mind you. <laughs> A Marvel comic hero. No, indeed, he shall be thrust into the crusher. Stop laughing, man. I'm and crushed. what shall teach thee what is the crusher? Here comes the smack. Or oh, was it the crusher? Yeah, wasn't that a WWE tag team? The crusher. Yeah, I think so. Anyway. What shall teach thee what is the crusher? The fire of God kindled, roaring over the hearts. <laughs> I'm trying to do the sound effects. Covered down upon them in columns outstretched. Wow. Surely that convinced you this is Quran. Mashallah. All right. Few, the last few, I'm just going to go through them fast. Chapter 105. That was chapter 104, now chapter 105. And now it's about the elephant, mind you. Hast thou not seen how thy Lord did with the men of the elephant? Did he not make their guile to go astray? And he loosed upon them birds in flights, hurling against them stones of baked clay. And by the way, if you don't know what this means, Allah sent birds to hurl baked clay on the men of the elephant to kill them dead. Those were one... Mighty big clay, if you ask me. And he made them like green blades devoured. That's it, friend. Five verses. Doesn't it shout to you, Quran al Kareem? Quran al Kareem. Allah, the snack bar. Okay, chapter 106. For the composing of Quraysh, they're composing for the winter and summer caravan. So let them serve the Lord of the house who has fed them against hunger and secure them from fear. That's it. Four verses. Okay, 107. Hast thou seen him who cries lies to the doom? This is he who repulses the orphan and urges not the feeding of the needy. So woe to those that pray and are heedless of their prayers, to those who make display and refuse charity. That's it. Seven verses of chapter 107. Mm -hmm. What in these verses convince you these are revelations of Allah and their Quran? The two final ones, chapter 110 and chapter 111. Chapter 110. When comes the help of God and victory, and thou seest men entering God's religion in throngs, then proclaim the praise of thy Lord and seek his forgiveness, for he turns against unto men. Three verses, that's it. It sounds like someone saying to someone else, hey, dude, when Allah comes and helps you and you get the victory, you're going to see so many men coming into the religion. So now praise your Lord who's forgiven you. Okay? Why would that lead me to assume these verses are Quran? Finally, chapter 111. This is this one is a doozer, a doozy. Okay. Perish the hands of Abu Lahab and perish he. His wealth avails him not, neither what he has earned. He shall roast as a flaming fire, and his wife, the carrier of the firewood, upon her neck a rope of palm fiber. This to me does not sound like revelation. It sounds like a dude who's so angry with a couple, husband and wife. And he's praying that Allah damn them to hell and they burn. That's what it sounds like to me. And you still laughing, dude? Um, I'm coughing over here. I uh, <clears throat> got some stuff in the air. All right. Okay, so those chapters that I gave you, just read them, even in Arabic, or have someone read them, and convince yourselves that if they were not part of the Quran, these are Quran, part of the Quran. Convince yourself. So my challenge to the Muslims again, quote a verse where the Quran says it's the word of Allah, quote a verse where the Quran says what the Quran consists of, when it says we sent down the Quran, okay, what did he send down as part of the Quran? How many chapters, how many verses? You can't do it because your religion is a joke. So when you attack the Bible and the God of the Bible, the Bible says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also, also reap. The same measure you use will be measured against you. So God has raised up his servants, and I pray I'm one of them. I'm not deceived. To take your own measure and use it against you to destroy your religion because it's fake and your book is from the pit of hell. May God save Muslims from Islam and bring them to the feet of Jesus by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I just turned your own arguments against you that you use against the Bible. You will not get away with mocking the Lord of the Scriptures, the Holy Bible, because God is almighty and he will arise. 
to avenge his servants whom you mock and ridicule and murder and to magnify his name in all the earth. Amen. So there you go. Now, brother, wow. you let me know. It's been over two hours. Do you want me to stop here and do a part five on the Quran? Mm -hmm. as yeah. brother Elon? Yes, please. Yeah, this was good. This is a good, this is a good send off, Sam. Thank you. And by the way, brother, <laughs> you, you never got disappoint, about, Sam. You got over 300 people. You got 239 on your club and 80 in YouTube. Dude, you got more than me, man. I'm starting to hate you, bro. Oh, man. Much love. Lord to the most high. Amen. Father, Son, Spirit. By the way, my friend is trying to upload that Tawheed part one because, again, to give you also more traffic as we upload them. He yeah. says there's something he can't do. He uploaded two and three, but maybe if you can work at it, because I want to then upload these for my channel and to give you, like, the people know, hey, this is the guy, not as good looking as me, but go subscribe to him. <laughs> yeah, I probably uh, got to make it a uh, creative comments. That's what I did to the last one. So I got to check it and see if it. Yeah, Guys, you got it. Now, folks, you got all the articles, all the rebuttals. They're there. You don't need to ask me. The reason why I published these works is because the spirit puts in the hearts of his servants to serve the church for the glory of Christ. So this is my way of serving you, taking the gifts God has given me to write, to research, to teach. You have my permission. You don't need to ask me. Take my stuff, translate them, upload them. But please ask the Holy Spirit to help, help you understand the arguments correctly so you can present them correctly and not misunderstand and misinform and do not charge. If they want to give you a love offering for your work, hallelujah. The labor is worthy of his wages, but do not charge. I don't charge you. I trust the Lord to provide through his church. You don't charge. Freely you receive, freely you shall give. And do pray for me and my daughters, their mother. Pray for miraculous, divine, supernatural, physical safety, protection, and health for all of us. My daughters fall in love with the Lord, that I remain healthy and more importantly, holy. Truly love the Lord. Be a doer of his word and never shame him and be more like Christ. And pray for the provision to do the work of the Lord and to have my daughters daily. So, guys, I'm here to serve you as long as the Lord gives me breath. Amen. Hey, Amen. God bless you, Sam. Sam. You know we appreciate you, man. This was, you too. I mean, all, all the sessions, this has been absolutely incredible, man. Absolutely incredible. This, the stuff that I'm learning, the stuff that you are that you're giving us by the grace of the Lord, man, I'm, I'm, I'm beyond grateful, Sam. Sim and I Christos promise you guys this. Sorry, what was that, brother? Go ahead. The other brother? Uh, no, I just said, uh, Christos Anesti. Hallelujah. He's risen, risen indeed. Yes, he now, is. Now, to share with you guys one thing, this is what's going to happen with you guys. I promise you. Remember my words. When you learn the arguments and know how to present them soundly, the Muslims are going to avoid you like the plague. Then they're going to start slandering your character. And then threatening you and even try to make an attempt of your life. That's when you know you've arrived. Rejoice. That means you're doing great damage. Amen. So there you go. The religion is dying at the end of the day, dude. Hallelujah, brother. Yeah. Hallelujah. But remember, remember this. We have to always pray for these people. Yeah, when, Matrix. when they realize that yeah, you're broken, well, we have to there. pray for them that they. Yeah. He's breaking up here, but I think yeah. he's saying pray that they realize the truth. When they do, they will come out and worship the Lord. Amen. That's our goal. My goal, again, Muslims, you may think I hate you. I don't. I want to see you fall in love with Jesus Christ. But if you're going to be a blasphemer, if you're going to mock and insult, and you're going to threaten and bully, then I am a bully destroyer by the grace of Jesus because you can't scare me. But my goal, and I mean this, is to see you fall in love with Jesus because Jesus is in love with you. He's your only hope. And he is <clears throat> calling you by his spirit to submit. Swallow your pride. Accept Muhammad for who he is, an antichrist. And come to the God of Muhammad, the judge of Muhammad, Jesus Christ. He's in love with you. Experience his love because he's real and it's miraculous. So that's our exhortation to you. Amen. Brethren, I'm out of here so I can get some beauty sleep because I want to look as hot and gorgeous as Avery. That's right. Yeah. Lady Slayer, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Price is risen, man. risen Take indeed. Care. I love you guys. Take care. Good night, brother. God too, bless. Man. Love you. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Wrapping up the live feed, you guys. Please like, share, subscribe. We're doing this all the time. Sam has made himself available to us and to this channel. Um, God is really growing us and blessing us. And so <laughs> if you've really been enjoying yourself, if you've been enjoying the sessions and listening in to Sam destroy Tawheed, we're gonna have so many other subjects and a matter of fact i want you guys in the comment section to 
uh, give us some topic titles that we can go over, some topics that we could do like little two, three part series on and uh, and I'll hit up Sam and we can get that going. Okay, so um, yeah, like, share, subscribe, tell a friend. We're gonna be doing this all the time, probably once or twice a week. And uh, so yeah, so be here for us, all right? I love you guys, thank you all. I love your support. Thank you for all the uh, super chats and the super stickers. You're truly a blessing to us. And so um, <clears throat> we're gonna destroy this cult, man. We're gonna destroy this cult and push the kingdom. You guys be blessed.